whether it was the play calling being off last week, whatever it was, that's the anomaly. They played nine football games, eight of the nine. They've had an explosive offense brought us that's capable of putting 30, 40 points to the board. Yeah, they are. And, you know, that's when you see this offense really humming along, it's about distribution. The ball's going everywhere. It's, you know, it's a pass to Dalton Schultz off a boot. It's a screen pass to Pollard in the out in the flat. You know, it's a, it's a deep ball uh, to uh, to C D Lamb or a, ten a, a, players caught passes yeah, for the Cowboys. Today. That's that's that when that, that's what you know. I sat tonight in the press box with next to the uh, one of the Atlanta scouts, and he was kind of talking to me about how they were going to try and attack the Cowboys today. And you know, but he the one thing he knew is that they were going to have problems defending the Cowboys. You know, that was something that that when it was you know came to you know early downs, third downs red zone stuff they knew that they were going to have some problems and and that showed today by what you just said there the ball going to 10 different uh you know cowboy receivers matt ryan we talked about him in the pre-game it's a really good quarterback he's working on nine straight four thousand yard passing seasons I, he looked awful I, I i don't know if this was just a combination of what the cowboys defenses were doing yeah. it, receive but but i he's been better this year certainly but I mean, I I expected the Cowboys to put up 30, 40 points. Right? I mean, I, I predicted they'd, they'd win 34 to 31, and they had 36 at halftime. But it, it was the, the Cowboys I expected to put points on the board. The Falcons, that was a surprise here. The Cowboys, yeah. the Cowboys are the epitome of complementary football, the offense doing things to help the defense out. But th- this was more than I expected from the Cowboys' defensive perspective. Falcons just were terrible on offense. Yeah, I think it really, really, you're, you're absolutely right about the problems that the Falcons had on offense. And But early early in these drives, though, they were moving the football. I mean, if you look at the passes to Kyle Pitts, and again, I leaned over to their scout, and I said, man, this is the problem that the Cowboys have, is they will give up chunk plays. You're up 7 to nothing, and then all of a sudden the defense starts to give up chunk plays, but then... You know they get they get the stop with uh, you know with Jordan Lewis on third down they get the stop on fourth down, you know these are the kinds of things that you know that you have to have in order to win these games and you know once the those first two it was like last week the first two series of the game, the, you know it was really the opposite like Denver didn't get anything it was like the third series but on the other hand, here with the Falcons they were having some early success and then from that point on. There just was really nothing. Now, the Cowboys did a great job. I mentioned Jordan Lewis, you know, Noah, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Anthony Brown playing uh, very, very well. Uh, you know, Diggs with a, an interception is there. Uh, K, you know, KZ you know, unfortunately had the uh, the the penalty. I could see him getting in this old teammate's face and stuff, and kind of getting riled up. But overall, defensively, they did a great job of getting after Matt Ryan. The Cowboys, you're talking about third down efficiency, 6 of 14 on third downs. They also went 3 of 3 on fourth down yeah. in this football game. The Falcons, 1 of 11 on third down. And here's it. This set stat tells a lot. We talked about the Cowboys and early down success rate. So the Cowboys had 14 third downs that they faced, but end up with 22 first downs. Yeah. So they get a lot of first downs outside of third downs, whereas Atlanta... One of 11 on third down, they only have 11 first downs. Yeah. So a lot of third downs faced for them, not that many third, not that many first downs. Overall, Cowboys, a ton of first downs, not that many third downs faced. Ultimately, what that says is the Cowboys are having success on first and second down. When they're doing that, they're at their they're, best. They're one of the best teams in the league, and they're in the top three when it comes to first down efficiency. And we call it CFL football because they have one less down there. Here we're talking about kickers and CFLs. <laughs> But, you know, when you look at really the analytics of things, it's converting first downs on second down. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's not never get it to third down. Go ahead and run a first down play, a second down play, convert, and then kind of move on your way. But, you know, great job again by Dan Quinn. The You know, the, you, know you got three coaches on that staff that are from the – formerly with the Atlanta Falcons. I guarantee you they're a happy bunch right now. Sad in a way that those are a lot of the players and stuff that they know, but overall pretty happy that they, that they were able to get this victory and, and get it convincingly today, the fact that Dan Quinn and his group didn't give up a touchdown. Let's go to the podium and Mike McCarthy. Bonded coming off his last game and, and his performance overall today. I think clearly it was the response we were looking for. Um, you know, I think... 
from Monday, the players were very accountable, uh, went about it just the way you, you would expect them to. Um, everybody contributed today. Uh, excellent team win. Um, you know, we had a ton of production, and, you know, we were, you know, pretty much dominant there in the first half. So um, it, I, it's great to see the locker room the way it is right now. Um, but I think that's, you know, that's what you're looking for. Uh, the preparation was excellent, and uh, our guys did a great job applying it to, to today and play with great emotion, won a turnover differential, and um, did a lot of good things. What does it say about your defense to lose Gregory and then go out there and have that type of performance? I think it says a lot, um, and I think it's really the the path we've been on. We've, we've been playing a lot of different you know, players, particularly young players, throughout the season, uh, and so this week was no different. We just, you know, we didn't change the, the, the plan, and you know, the timing of uh, Randy's injury was Wednesday. So I mean, there was definitely time to adjust. But I think the point I'm making is it shows the confidence that we have in our players in our defensive front there, just to, you know, go next man up and keep rolling. Was it extra sweet for Dan? Do you think? I, I think that's obvious. You know, it's human nature. Uh, I, we were all very happy for. For Dan and you know the the guys that uh, you know obviously were in Atlanta last year, so I think it's it's natural goes on in this league, and um, and um, you know I was obviously very happy for Dan. Jordan Lewis, coach, how would you describe his game and how he set the tone? Love his fight, um, you know, almost you know too much fight at times, and you love that about him. Uh, Jay Lewis, so competitive, um, and you know I thought he played probably one of his better games uh, today, but his tenacity and. and you know, and I think that's you know a big part of his presence as a leader, also in our locker room. So, uh, J. Lou was excellent today. When you think about all three phases really working today, can you talk about the sequence at the end of the first half? Your defense able to get the three and out, then obviously special teams, and then you go and get the two. Well, I mean, it's it's just really the definition of complementary football. Uh, you know, every every team in this league thrives for it. Um, and you know, that was that was a big message. Uh, you know, emphasized message this week. Uh, you actually, you spend a little more time in the, in the video game situation um, that we do on Fridays. You know, showing examples of complimentary football throughout the the league. Uh, you know, last the last two weeks. So, um, and, and you know, and it, and it felt that way. And our guys responded very well. But yeah, I, I think that you know the fact that you know we to get the three and out, and you know to set up the all out rush there on punt. So, right? you know, the execution was very clean and. And you know, took the momentum into the locker room and, and really wanted to come out the same way too. So uh, I thought that was a big swing in the game right before the half. You didn't defer after winning the toss for the first time this year. Was that obviously a decision of yours? The offense wanted to go out there and set the tone and, and go from there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you look at the matchups throughout the week, things that you know you, you are focused on as far as you know how they can stress you. And you know, we had a lot of respect for the kickoff return. Uh, coming in, coming into the game. So you know all those factors. You look at those you know, every week. That's part of the game planning. You know I, I'm naturally would prefer to defer, to defer, prefer to defer, is uh, in my natural, or me, would be my tendency. Uh, but this was uh, purely a focus. We wanted to get out there, get off, you know, jump out front and, and get the lead and let our de- defense, uh, you know, play with the lead. Was was the intent. Last week, uh, there was a lot of talk about the blueprint. You know, did Denver create a blueprint? Dak said he would welcome a similar approach. They didn't blitz a lot today, and he picked him apart. Do you kind of think that that speaks to his ability to respond to whatever it is that they were? Not that it was the exact same, but something similar. Well, that. they came out and played man early. Uh, so I think we went five for five against man, man for man. So, you know, they came out with the intention Got uh, of a challenge on the perimeter. And, and I'm sure. <laughs> Part of that was, uh, you know, last week's game, and, and I just think it's all part of the response that you were looking for from our football team. So, uh, I, I thought that Dak played excellent today, uh, just you know, in command, and you know, our, our perimeter group really responded after last week. Coach, was there a chip on the shoulder? How pissed were you guys following that that loss to Denver last week? Well, I mean, it's. Uh, you know, it's 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 part of it. You know, and I think the most important thing is you you're able to learn from all your experiences, and and you have the opportunity to pay it forward. And I I think as a football team, we did. Uh, you know, no one, you know, seven days ago, we didn't like where we were uh, when I when I was standing up here, uh, but that's that was the response that we needed, and and um, our guys did a hell of a job. We've asked you a lot this year about your decisions on fourth down, especially early in games. Today, an example of why you continue to call it and you believe it, it does set the tone and help you overall over the course of the season? Yeah, I mean, you, you, 
you know, we treat fourth down no different than, you know, third and two to three and third to, you know, six to ten and whatever, you know, how it falls, red zone. I mean, fourth down is a is a situation. And not only is it the decision to go for it on fourth down, it, it obviously puts you in a different headspace on second and third down leading up to that. So, uh, but yes, I, I think we have established a tendency of, you know, how we would like to approach fourth down week in and week out. But, you know, it is a game plan decision each week. What about Dorrance Armstrong's performance today? Dorrance was awesome today. You know, I, I thought you know to do it on both you know both sides of uh, defense uh, and special teams. Um, you know, it's it's just great to have him back. I I, yeah, I think shout to you, you know, Bobby. last week was he was knocking off the rust a little bit, uh, but I, I thought he was big time for us today. Let me see seven and two in the chat. You've got to be very pleased at the way you controlled and had the number of three and outs you had today. The third down conversion was not good at all. No, absolutely. I, it was all, you know, just like any football game starts up front. And I thought we controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball and, frankly, even in special teams, uh, particularly with our punt rush. So, uh, you know, our you know our guys needed to bring the hammer today, and and, uh, and we did that. And I, and I think it was, you know, evident, you know, with the with the lead that we had there at halftime and was able to finish it off in the second half. Can you recall the victory when you just going back when you dominated so completely on offense, defense, and special teams with the block cut? Well, that's a complimentary football, you know, uh, picture that you're looking for. So, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's you know, you have objectives uh, each and every week, and it's nice when you hit them. And, you know, I just give all the credit to the to the players and coaches. Uh, I thought the in-game adjustment was, was we we're, we're on top of it. You know, we had some penalties there in the second half. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll learn from that. We'll take a look at those. Uh, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly, this is, this is what we needed to do today, and, and I commend our team for, for getting it done. How would you describe, Deck was up here last week, and he wasn't happy with his performance last week. He, he, we saw how he responded. How would you describe the game he had today? Well, I think the key, you know, coming out of last week was, you know, Dak let me borrow his suit this week, so he wore here last week. So that's you know, that's really that's that's why we got it done. So, uh, but no, I, I think that he, funny non-funny guys should not try to be funny on camera. That's for sure. But. Um, uh, I mean, Dak, the thing about Dak, he's the same person every day, just the way he works. Um, you know, I, I don't think you could tell the difference, um, you know, in the work week from, you know, the way he approaches it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, trust me, we, we, we understood what happened last week, and, you know, it's, it, it didn't feel good, you know. And, and I think just as a whole, you know, we didn't give our fans a whole lot to cheer about last week, and, and they were outstanding today. I thought the environment just was, was awesome all the way from the kickoff all the way through. So, you know, and I, and I thank our fans for the environment that they created today. All right, that's Mike McCarthy, the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys beat the Falcons 43-3. to Postgame show is brought to you by Pepsi, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Also brought to you by the Salvation Army, doing the most good. But clearly, Mike McCarthy reflecting on last week's loss, the disappointment, and um, this team coming out a little bit more ready to play this week at home. Cowboys are 7-2 and now. Uh, they win 43-3. to We'll hear from Brad Sham. Plus, take your phone calls, your texts at 877- Oh my goodness, baby! Appreciate y'all. Seven and two. What's new? We seven and two. And Cowboy Nation, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts uh, when 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 this all is said and done. I can't wait. I can't wait, Cowboy Nation. How about everybody that, that doubted the Cowboys now, huh? Where's everybody at now? You know, uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, thank. Thank the Broncos. Let's thank the Broncos for what they did to us last week. Let's thank them because they got us realigned, we refocused, our, our, our reasonings are straight. The people that was hitting that panic button, sweating, that thought that this was the same team from 2018, the same team from 2018, 17, 16, 15, 14. This is a different team. This is a different team. Falcons going to the Super Bowl next year, King. <laughs> Don't see Stephen A. in his cowboy hat today. No way. Thank you, Broncos. You know, appreciate y'all. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and, and and this is the thing. We can see now that people fail to realize wide receivers, they play a major role. They do. And being on the same page with your wide receiver, that goes a long way, not a short way. Shout out to you, Cisco. Not the one that released the dragon, but I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you, Jay Versick. Appreciate you. Release the cranking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
We're going to shoot all of that down, baby. Yeah. Gracias, Broncos. You have a wig in the Kraken. On to A to 2. No doubt, no doubt. Let's go. Bronco Trash talking about the blueprint. Yeah. And, and you know what the valuable part of it that we picked up from the interview from Mike McCarthy is that those first few series, they tried to lock it up at man. And what I said, I told everybody, oh, you want to play man? Oh, you want to play man? Okay, that's good. That's where we want you at. Because if these wide receivers are at 80 to 90%, they're going to get open. They're going to get all the way open. Hey, I do need to Uncle Shay Shay that thing. You know, I, 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 got, I got me a bottle way over there. I can't wait to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, A.J. Terrell is so mad. Yeah, let him be mad. He don't get kibbles and bits because he ain't a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and shout out to you, Victor. You know, whoa, the Tampa Bay lost. You know, that's good for us. That's good for us. What we're trying to accomplish here, Cowboy Nation, is we want this same game that we had today. A couple of a couple of weeks from here, like seven weeks from here. Yeah, we wanted to be in the playoffs. Right? Right? That's what we want. We we still leading and winning our division. Yeah. That's what we want, and that's what we're getting. We we just like that, Cowboy Nation. We are just like that. Let's see. I'm Shay. This is the thing, Lowell. Smiley face, smiley face. John Deere tractor package. Yeah, they're still on commercial break. But, yeah, that's what we're looking for, Cowboy Nation. We're looking for that moment. We're looking for that momentum. We're looking for uh, all of those things. And, and it happened. It is happening. Right now, right before, right before we can get anything else going, it's happening right in front of our faces right now. It's right, it's right in front of our face. How about them cowboys? How about them cowboys? That's the way to bring it bike. That's the way to bring it bike. How about bike. them boys? Give me my money, huh? Give me my money. Give me my money. We had our worst game, but this damn show was the best one. Uh, and they had it. They just had us. Both the one who's They had the odds the, to, to, uh, the Falcons. How about them? Uh, even Baker was wrong. What? It's America's team. Don't you know what counts out? I said what I said. It was Super Bowl season. I don't care what Shannon Sharp or Steven. Come on, Spill man. Said. You weren't even talking this last week, man. Y'all brother, just lost. I was talking, brother. <laughs> we, man, I, that was last Smith. week. This is this is now. Huh? Give me my money. Give, give me everything right now, boy. Man. I told you. How about them boys? Dig it give in, it. Dig it in. Dig it in. Dig it in. How about them cowboys? Where your money at? Brother, my money. Come on, bro. Just add it on here. Give me a thousand. Oh, now you got hundreds. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, hundreds. Hundreds. I'm country Wayne. What you mean, brother? Man, I'm, I'm bro, listen, man. I'm all over. Man, add it on. Damn, if not 10, too, boy. Let the bridge fall down. You falling off. Hold up. Come on. Boy, don't do this, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bro, that 500 loss. Man, at least, Damn, you ain't got it. at least I'm paying you right now. Bro, you ain't paying you, man. I paid you last week. <laughs> Just because I ain't pay you on that Sunday, I paid you on tell on. Yeah, man. Damn, boy, you show what? Yeah. Huh? How about them boys? How about them boys? How about them boys? I told you, man, listen, you know the Falcons, bro. Come on, bro. Man, I know I shouldn't bet on them Falcons. No, man, bro. Don't, don't bet on them Falcons. Don't start to try to. Don't oh, try boy, to got a jersey for every team we now, play against. I told you, boy, that this is a Super Bowl team, and Stephen A. Smith, they don't know. They ain't on the field. Stephen said, uh, Shannon, he ain't playing no more. How about them Cowboys? That's what everybody got something to say. Don't DM my phone now. DM yeah, phone now. Huh? Yeah, me. Yeah, call them now. Call them now. Uh, they called us last ain't, week. This ain't nothing, man. This is a fact. Everybody beat the fact. Brother, 43 to 3. Everybody, it wasn't even exactly, no game. Exactly. That was a bar. Listen, brother, this is a Super Bowl caliber. This is a Super Bowl team. I'm going to go to call it. I ain't said it uh, all the week. It's, we win the Super Bowl. Man, you shouldn't even feel we good. We're taking that money, man. This is a fact. God man. damn it. It feels so good. Only thing I don't like is these 20s, but I'm going to put this up <laughs> not in here. How uh, about them boys? Cut your way. I got too much week, money, man. Man. Brother, <laughs> brother, you ain't going to come on, man. I know. That last week was I a fluke. I'll just I say, are, are we a Super Bowl? Are we the best team in the league? No. Brother, do you see what Dak just did? Last week, he tricked y'all, man, because that was right after well, Halloween. That was trick Everybody trick. do the practice like that, man. <laughs> Brother, it's the Cowboys. It's the America's team. Ah, I love it all. It's the, how about them boys? I'll give it up. Go, go ahead and go to another game, bro. Why you mad? Why you, you mad? You the team. You ain't he big man. A, look at his face. A lot of fact of fan. You the Cowboy hater. I'm mad by my money, man. Brother, you no, mad. no, look, look, look at the hater. Look at the hater face. You should have known better than that. Come on, man. Everybody who had something to say, brother, you already knew that, brother. Come on, man. Watch another game. Turn to another game, man. 
Turn to another game. Keep, just keep them hunters as we. But I keep the hunters. I'm cutting the <laughs> What you mean? <laughs> you're not the one thing. What you been doing with your money? I ain't worried about it. Yeah, it look like you stretched by something. Else. I seen the eye, but I know you want to move some furniture. Uh, you want to move first, but last week you was all happy and jolly. The energy has changed because that's what the Cowboys do. For everybody who's hating on us, this is our business. We're seven and two, still number one in, in, in NFC East. Yeah. Just keep that same energy in this. Brother, I got that. I got it. I got the energy. Listen, please. Uh, go to sleep. What you looking at? Them ain't none of your teams. Yo, boy, you just changed the jersey. You just watch the whole. Come on, man. You watch the whole nother game. You want to watch this game? Huh? Uh. Let's go, baby. Trick or treat, baby. Uh, Panthers looking good today. I can't wait. That's the game that we need for them to win. We need the Panthers to win. That's what we need. Let me refresh, make sure everything is straight over here. Yeah. We need the Panthers to win. Where the Panthers at? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, we need the Panthers to win, baby. This is total pandemonium. Reasserting the offense, making Atlanta have to. Our plan is we're going to score and we're going to make you chase us all that's, day that's long. That's what I was kind of thinking too. And, and the Panthers other game thing I think is um, we're we're going to jam this down your throat for Dan Quinn and the other yeah. Atlanta coaches, and maybe there was some of that going. Oh, on. Oh no, I, I clearly think that the two point play, Brad, yeah, was yeah. like you know what. Like McCarthy didn't even hesitate. Usually, coaches, you make the extra point, you're grateful you got that, and you kind of, oh, and then the official walks over, and you kind of go, "Nah, we'll 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 kick off here. We'll can we can we get can we take it over here on the kickoff?" You know, and no, he didn't even hesitate. He's like, "No, nah, move it up a yard," and he turns and he's like, "Kellen, get a play. Yeah. Whatever your best two point play is, just go ahead and send it in there right now." So I do think this was one of those games where. Mike McCarthy, A, they wanted to get back on track as far as some establishment stuff. But I think that they, I think that Mike McCarthy called this game today or managed this game today in the light of thinking about Atlanta coaches that were on the staff. I mean, yeah, he wants to win, but he also knows, hey, my defense is playing okay right now. Anytime I could, I was sitting next to a Falcon scout, you know, up in the box, uh, at the press box. And on that, when they went for it down there on on fourth down, you know, instead of you know, and, and then they they get the touchdown running in there, yeah. he looked at me and goes, "Boy, that was a big fu moment right there." Yeah, you, know, you know, and I, the other the interesting thing is, it's Quinn and Witt, and who else? Dirt, uh, the defensive a, line. Yeah, a, AD. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, dirty. And then uh, KZ is it dirt? Is that how you say it? dirty? Yeah, yeah, dirt, dirty, dirty, dirty. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and, and, and then KZ. Well, and, and then and KZ. Neil, Neil, but, yeah. You know, he doesn't know. He doesn't know KZ anything. Right. And, right. But but I do think that you're on to something with the coaches. Yeah. Um, and, and the funny thing is that Arthur Smith didn't have anything to do. with with any of no, them, but, the owners. But, but it was I'll, the owners. They fired, they fired I'll, the general manager. I'll tell you what, time. well, the owner was sitting up here. I bet I didn't see him pregame. I bet she had on his black jacket and a red vest, you know, that he normally wears. Yeah. And okay. so, you know, it, that's one of those things where all of a sudden it's like there's there's a little pride there that goes. Human on. beings too. Yeah, exactly. Sure, sure. Exactly. but I, but that all that said, you know, you you establish some. You reestablish some confidence. Right. These are young men playing. Right. But to me, it underscores. What I think we talked about this in the pregame show. The biggest problem with the Dallas defense last week was the Dallas offense. Yeah, and today, they didn't have complimentary any, football. They didn't have any problems. Right, they had right. no problems at all. Let's look ahead, though. You know, you got Kansas City coming up, though. You know, and and Ari was talking about the ball went to ten different receivers in this football game. Think about that. If yeah, you, you know what that the and you know, or is that just the Cowboys being the Cowboys? I think that's just the Cowboys being the Cowboys. We've seen Prescott do that. I'm more impressed yeah. with three different guys getting interceptions. Mm. Jordan Lewis getting two breakups. Your MVP of the defense today, Jordan Lewis? No, Parsons. Well, he's Parsons. on my Cowboy Hour show tomorrow night. So, uh, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, he knows so, how Brad knows how to pick him now. I tell you what, though, I've, had, I've had a pretty good run of luck. You have had a good <laughs> I've run. I've had, had a say. pretty good run of luck. I mean, to pick one random guy to to have a big game, like you, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, it, it seemed like Atlanta did good. Yeah. looked at film and thought this is the guy we need to go after. And that third down stop, and then the fourth subsequent fourth down stop for him, Boy, huge. But you know, uh, uh, Armstrong. Getting a sack and, and, and block blocking a punt. a punt. Yeah, I mean he'd he'd okay get a look. Let me ask you this, so Brad and Ari, 
Armstrong, we get so excited. I'm sorry if you're driving home, Armstrong, right now. We get so <laughs> excited. Leave not, Armstrong alone. Okay, well, <laughs> and you're also not sorry, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't read me so well. <laughs> I just but know but think about this, though. Think about this. So it's it's like we what? get excited for Armstrong, and then we no, lose you know what, it for you know three games. Love? You know what I love? What? You don't lose him. Here's what I love is that you can carry that shovel with you everywhere you go. What, the, my, my dirt thrower? Your dirt thrower. I'm just <laughs> sitting there. I am played, glad. He played no, well. I am glad He's he did. He's a backup you know Player and I'm and you know what and I need him to play well against Kansas City you next do. week too. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's going to need to be. Yeah, a non-backup I need player I need him to be sure. that guy next week. You, I'm, you, I'm, I'm, am I begging? I'm like I'm like I'm begging. Baby. You absolutely need him to be that guy. And and Dan Quinn will have a whole different plan. You'll yeah. see maybe Parsons used differently. And you you know you need Basham. You just you need Goldston. You need all of them. You you, you that's what it's going to take. But mostly, it's go. Hey, they're going to give up some points to Kansas City. Yeah, that's still yeah. Patrick Mahomes. You're going to need your offense to take the pressure okay. off your defense. This yep. is going, this is your line yep. the, the whole rest of the season. Now it's all about the offense, right? Well, it's going to be all about the offense. It's not all about the offense, but this defense is Total not. Do you think effort, it's good enough to go win a game? Oh, I, last week I didn't. I mean, I, I thought that they were going to. Well, gonna, and you brought this up in the Vikings up. game. Yeah, you thought the issue that happened in the Broncos game I would did. actually hurt them in the Vikings game. I it's did. The same thing. I did. It's Three and outs. I thought would kill this defense. You know what was interesting about that is what when. You know they were one. They held Minnesota to one for thirteen. Did the same thing to these cats. And I did not have the impression that the defense was playing right. that well. Right. Same yeah. here. I thought cut. Now you know you don't know how they affected him. You yeah. don't know what he sees. You see, we can't see it like he sees it. But they they didn't let Dalvin Cook run over them. They made Cousins make some bad throws. This secondary is going to give up some plays. Mm. Fortunately, today they played a really good quarterback with probably one, maybe two really good receivers. I don't know if I would call Patterson's a highly talented player. Yeah. Pitts uh, is their guy. Pitts is the guy. They, and miss, he caught they, four miss, balls. they miss Ridley so bad. So right? badly. Yeah, like so Jones, bad. Ridley. But they are not, they're not a talented right. offensive team. Oh, they'll admit that. Team. Yeah, they'll admit so that. So that is a team that you should do well against. And when you make them one dimensional, which the Cowboys did late in the first quarter when they mm-hmm. went ahead 14 to 3, yeah. okay, I don't know how you want to play, but I know how you're going to have to play. Yeah. And then the offense just kept pouring it on and the defense then didn't have to think about it Mm -hmm. they could just go play loose and that i think is when this defense plays its best and that's what's going to have to happen next week yeah the cowboys now start this stretch that they have every year where they play sunday and then they play on consecutive thursdays so they will have played three more football games by the time we get to december 2nd when they play at the saints so they're seven and two here now at kansas city raiders on thanksgiving at the saints the following week are so they, let me ask you this: Are okay. you are you sorry to see Washington win, or happy to see Tampa get I heard a third about, loss? I heard you guys talking about this during the game, and you kept bringing up how Tampa's help for Washington. Hey. It, 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 you know, it tra- no, I think Washington did the Cowboys a favor there. Any yeah. time you can get out of the fourth hole in yeah. this playoff thing, yeah. because the fifth hole is going to either be the Rams, right, or Arizona, and that's a team you don't have a tiebreaker against yeah. in Tampa, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. Now you can play Arizona. Right. But I'm just saying, though, right. to me, no, right. I do not want to have to play somebody in the playoffs, I don't believe, just right now as we're sitting here talking, I don't want to play Arizona and I don't want to play the Rams. No, I mean, you're going to have to sooner or later, but you don't want that, right. to, be, the first round. Don't first want round. that to be your first game. We're really yeah. scared so, of it. Right. But you have a chance to beat Arizona because you have a chance to play them. Right. right. You were, as you just said, Ari, you were behind Tampa if you're tied with them because you lost. So... Okay, you know, at first I just don't. I like seeing all the division teams lose. But then hold on a minute. Tampa just lost their third game. Right. Washington, bless their hearts, lost Chase Young for the year. Yeah. So, uh, and, and Dallas still has a four game lead over the Giants and Washington. Mm. Four games? And, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's just one game at a time. Next, because the thing that was important about them playing well, pouring it on, changing all of the thinking, uh, and you, you're alluding to this. I mean, these next three games are a toothache. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. yep. So yep. you you had to get this one back. Now, yeah. how many will you settle for out of the next three? How many do you have to have? Two. Give me two. 
Give me, you, I mean, you should get you, all three. You should? Should? <laughs> You're going to go to Kansas City and New Orleans well, and play the Raiders? We this probably game, do this it. Game probably eight the, ga- the game you're likely going to lose, the Raider game. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that worries me. That's game. Thanksgiving. No, Nobody wants either. to lose on Thanksgiving. It yeah. happens around here the last couple yeah, of years. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> what do you mean sometimes? Uh, no, I've been around a while. I've <laughs> seen some good ones. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Huh? <laughs> Cowboys are 7-2, and two, Brad. Thank you, as always, buddy. You bet, boys. Have a good week. Kansas City next week. Brad Sham joining us here. Brian brought us has brought his shovel. I'm Ari Tepkin. This is the Dallas Cowboys postgame show at Dallas Cowboys football. We'll continue with Shout out to Brad Shab and uh, shout out to uh, Brian Broaddus and his shovel <laughs> and uh, everybody else. Hey, now, granted, we could be play the week 11. That's what we're looking at. And we plan week 12, the Raiders, and week 13, the Saints. I think, I think we can go on this run. I think we can go on this run. Um, m- remember, a lot of people had us losing to the Falcons. And see how that went, right? Kansas City Chiefs going to be a hard one, not week 11. But and that's because we're going up to Kansas, right? The Raiders, I, I see a lot of people say the Raiders suck. Yeah, so, yeah, that laugh is funny, Reggie. <laughs> that laugh is so funny. Yeah, so uh, if when we contextualize all of these things, Cowboy Nation, I, I really think that, believe it or not, week 17, and I'm not looking down the schedule, if they somehow get all of their healthier guys back, then we then, then that'd probably be our most difficult one. But outside of that, divisional opponents, week 14, week 15, week 16, and week 18. Come on, Cowboy Nation. Come on, Cowboy Nation. We can go, we can go do this right here, baby. We can do it. We can do it. We go. I just want to run it up. Can we check us out? I don't really in the field letter. Yeah. No, no. Oh. I've been really in the field. We can run it. I love the field lately. I just want to run it up. Don't need no deals. I make the deal. I think we can go run this thing all the way up, Cowboy Nation. I think we can. They got to they gotta understand now, barring health. We're we going to run this thing the way we do it, Cowboy Nation. We're going to do our thing. We're going to get it going the best way possible. Steelers line played it, played a tie. Yeah. Let me see what the score. All right, all right, all right. 14 to nothing right now. Look like the Panthers moving the ball. Uh, hope, hopefully the Panthers win that game. They got P.J. Walker versus uh, Colt McCoy. And uh, so far... Vikings beating the Chargers, okay. The Eagles Broncos game. Eagles up right now, three to nothing, and, and we'll see how that game unfolds. We kind of rooting for the Broncos to win against the Eagles, so we can hush them up a little bit. But we'll see how that game unfolds from there. Packers, Seattle Seahawks. At this point, I think we want the Seahawks to win. And what what we want is basically home field home field advantage throughout the playoffs. That's what we're looking for. Broncos will win. Lions and Steelers, yeah, and in a tie. And th- th- that's a uh, AFC teams anyway. So the Lions are really, you know, they ain't really making no noise over there. Your plans. So we ain't really worried about the Lions. And Lions, of course, are NFC. But you know, Pittsburgh, we really ain't worried about them. Uh, we going all the way, Jessica said. We going all the way, yeah. Um, the Pigeons will lose. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys flex on them, baby. Yeah. And by the Washington team winning, that actually help us, believe it or not. That actually help us uh, by them winning because they beat a team that we lost to. And now their record, they lost three games. We only lost two. So that actually helped. And the Cardinals, by them being down, we wanting the Cards to actually lose because that would help us out because the Cards are eight and one, I believe, right? So that help us out, and then we will have a uh, a game behind the Cards and we face them, right? We need home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Absolutely, you know that's what we need. We do. 
Uh, yeah, D- Devon helped us. Yeah, 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 helped us out. None worse than the tie, the Grinch. Yeah, yeah. 15 and 2, tier 1, tactical. Yeah, operation. Yeah, 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 tactical. Yeah, we we got to be 15 and 2, right? I'll take that. Are the cars 8 and 1? Yeah, we want the cars to end 8 and 2 by the end of the day. <laughs> and uh, they will only be one game ahead of us at that point. Yep. But we faced them. We faced them down the uh, line, so that works out too, Cowboy Nation. Appreciate everybody for jumping in. Gold Panthers, this is from Jeffrey. Uh, Magic, appreciate you. Big win. Hey, we needed this win, Cowboy Nation. We absolutely needed this win. We did. Uh, we, we needed this win to go all the way with us, and uh, now the morale is back. The confidence is building back up. And what we can do, even if we go on this long, long run, all we have to do is tell everybody about that wet floor sign. Like, hey, you remember what happened in Denver? Well, what happened when Denver came to our house? And it was our home. So let's let's stay focused, lock in. It can happen to us any day. Blasted by Parsons. A blitz sack and a fumble, but it's recovered by Atlanta's right tackle, Caleb McGarry. How about Parsons? This was not a close game for long. Cowboys 43, Falcons 3. This is the largest win for the Cowboys since October 22nd of 2000 when they knocked off the Arizona Cardinals 48-7. Welcome back inside AT&T Stadium. I'm Ari Temkin along with the Super Bowl winning NFL scout Brian Broaddus on Twitter at Brian Broaddus. I am on Twitter at Ari Sports. We will hear from Dak Prescott, the quarterback, coming up in a moment, plus your phone calls, your texts. At 877-881-1053. That number again, 877-881-1053. Postgame show brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, a store with top brands like Adidas, Shimano, Rawlings, Columbia. All guaranteed low prices like you've never seen. Visit them in-store or at academy.com. This one was 7-3 after one, but brought us the Cowboys got a whole heck of a lot of points, most ever in a quarter by this team, 29 in that second quarter, including a two-point conversion after a touchdown to close out the second quarter, but that, that's really where this thing—that's really where this thing went awry for Atlanta. Uh, the the Falcons started off field goal, downs, punt, punt, and I mean at that point it was yeah. it was all over. And then you had the block punt, and then you had the end of the half. So yeah, it, it really was. It was a it was a bad last uh, couple of minutes uh, for the Falcons right there, and then. The second half, not much better. You know, you get the punt and then the three interception, the punt and then the down. So uh, tip of the cap again to Dan Quinn. Tip of the cap to the defensive players. Looked a little shaky to start. You know, it did. I mean, you know, I was watching and, you know, you know Pitts with some big plays, some big chunk plays early. In, in, but uh, the Cowboys were able to kind of you know, hold the Falcons to that, uh, to that field goal yeah, and, then, uh, and able to rally from that point. <laughs> yeah, to give you an idea, early in this game, one of the first drive, the, the, the first drive of the game, Cordell Patterson ran for 14 good. yards, yeah. which matched the longest run he'd had all year. Mm. First drive of the game, yeah, fourteen yard run for Cordero Patterson. Longest <laughs> match the we, longest. We kind of thinking, we kind of thinking, oh no, wait, this right. team doesn't run the ball, and now they're about <laughs> to start running the ball, right? Yeah, or oh, this team's getting chunk yardage on them yeah. pretty easily, and so this is going to be a shootout. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I, I did think it was going to be a shootout, especially when the way, like you say, those the first the first drive, you know, was just like. You know, Dallas goes down the field, and I'm like, okay, they really, the Falcons really can't stop them. And no. then, and then all of a sudden, I'm here. I'm writing down, you know, gain of 17, gain of 18, gain of 14, and then you had, you know, uh, you know, the, the they had a second down incompletion, and then they had a, and then the, a third down incompletion as well, and that's when kind of Jordan Lewis kind of stepped up and uh, made that play, and then they had to kick the field goal. But man, I mean, there was some. You're right. There were some big chunk plays that were. Uh, that were very, uh, very much a part of that first drive for the Falcons. What do you think changed, if anything, after that? Because it was the first couple of drives, eight play drive to start for the Falcons, fifty eight yards ends in a field goal. The next drive, seven plays, thirty six, and they they drive all the way to the Cowboys thirty two before yeah. um, they don't kick the field goal. Instead, they go for it and and then fail. And after that, punt, punt, block, punt. Yeah, if you remember the second series too, here's another one where they have you know you Pitts had another seven, they had a seventeen, yeah. a fourteen, 
And then they get a tip pass. Mm. Golston had a tip pass on second and seven. It was the first time the defensive line had really made yeah, a play it, for the Cowboys. Exactly. I mean, I mean, you know, so it's second and seven. They get the tip pass, so it's third and seven. I'm looking and they try to find to. Pitts again, and Lewis knocks the ball down. And then, you know, they go to Gage on fourth down, and then boom, another knockdown by uh, Lewis as well. So, yeah, I mean, it was those back to back plays, but. There were some there were some chunk plays, but that tip pass by Golston, I think, was one of the things that kind of got it. It got it to where it was a a third and seven, and you know the 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 Falcons really weren't able to make it like a fourth or a, you know a third and a well a third and seven. You know you want to be more of a third and two or third and one, but seven yards is still a lot to do. And then to go for it on fourth and seven, I, I think says a lot about them too. That's a great. I'm glad you pointed that out because. I wrote down on my sheet, I took and taken notes, Falcons ran 10 plays before a defensive line finally made a play. Yeah. That was something going into this game we were kind of wondering, how effective can this defensive line be? No, Gregory, obviously they've been without DeMarcus Lawrence for some time. You know, could, Can they figure out a way to manufacture pressure? 10 plays into this thing, yeah. and they hadn't done anything to make a play, and then all of a sudden you've got Golston knocking the ball down the right. last scrimmage. And then two great plays by Lewis, and maybe that's what changed. Is suddenly then the defensive line became more active. Parsons ends up with a sack. Dorrance Armstrong had a sack. They, they seem to figure out ways to become more of a factor where they hadn't been the first ten plays of this this football game defensively. Well, what and yeah, and you're absolutely right. What happens is Dallas gets that ball back. You know, once they get the ball mm-hmm. back after that, uh, you know, after that uh, drive for the Falcons, you know, they go on a march on their own and they go fourth and five. Here you are. You defend a fourth and seven. You get off the field. You have your own fourth and five, and and Dak finds CD for twenty one yards. You know, and then that was the end of the first quarter right there. But I mean, there was just a, it was really just a nice job by uh, the Cowboys getting defense, uh, making defensive plays, making some making that stop, and then turning around and punishing uh, the Rams. Oh, excuse me, the Rams, the Falcons <laughs> for uh, their, uh, you know, for them going forth there on fourth down. Uh, Dak Prescott of this one, absolutely fantastic. Twenty four of thirty one, two ninety six, and two touchdowns. That's called efficiency right there. Yeah, twenty four forty one. So only seven incompletions, nearly three hundred yards Ooh. passing, two touchdowns. Also added two carries for five yards, but had a rushing touchdown, a, a fourth down, I believe. At that, a third, their third fourth down conversion, a short run for a touchdown. Uh, by Dak, so you know, last week Cowboys offense took a week off. Call it what, whatever you want to call it, they were underappreciating Denver, uh, or well, they were just off. Well, that's what you know. And, and, and Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator at Atlanta, talked about. And everybody's like, "Oh, well, here's the blueprint. Here's the blueprint to beat the Cowboys." You know, and Denver's kind of pounding their chest. Well, here's the blueprint, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, no one's ever played them that way kind of stuff. And you're kind of going, And they didn't listen oh, to me. Okay. That's you know, okay. Denver clearly has better cover guys than what the Falcons have. You know, and, and the, the Cowboys, again, whether it was health, I, I do believe. You know, I think, you know, when, when Amari Cooper comes on our station and talks about, hey, listen, you know, they can talk about covering us and all that. You know, and, and he goes, we're not making excuses. But we were a banged up receiving core. Well, and they, you know, CD with the ankle, and you know, and him with that hamstring, and it didn't look that way today. I mean, and, and, like we saw it. Dak missed throws. D- Dak had guys in that game down the field open that he missed throws, and so like, you know, you've got people talking about well, it, 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 you, you could have he could have run for the first down in certain situations, or you know, why not pick it up his leg? Like we've seen the Cowboys on third and short go for kill shots and hit them. Like the, the Cowboys have been a very efficient team in throwing the ball down the field. Like I just I left that game last week thinking, well, let's wait and see next week what happens. Hmm. But I, I don't think this was as much of Denver's defense as it was the Cowboys, and and specifically Dak just missing throws that he's made all season long, and then you combine that with. Some interesting play calling decisions. Combine that with Amari Cooper with the drop, with Tony Pollard with the drop, and it's like, yeah, yeah, that that is the reason their offense didn't get stopped by a good defense. Their offense got stopped by their own offense. Yeah, they, they did a poor job. And again, when you don't when you don't uh, secure first downs, when you don't keep the chains moving, and you don't score points, this puts this uh, this defense in harm's way. And uh, tonight they didn't uh, they weren't put in harm's way, and uh, you know they were able to kind of play with the lead and. They were able to hold things together and did a really nice job with it. Your thoughts here on the head coach, Brian? 
Yeah, I thought the head coach today, you know, and, and you know, I've, I've been critical of this head coach. You know, this team is 7-2 and two right now. He does a good job of trying to keep his players healthy during the week, get them ready to play. They're kind of focusing in on what's going to happen here coming up pretty soon with the two games in five days. You know, those things are all stuff that, you know, you have to be very conscious of. But, yeah, I give him credit. You know, and I thought today he, he showed a little chip on his shoulder. I think he I think he had Dan Quinn's back and Joe Witt's back today and AD's back, you know, uh, with those players and then the Falcon players. I mean, he knew he knew his team needed to have a, a big kind of victory, and he managed the game that way. He stayed aggressive. His players made plays, and again, he he got it. You know, he got his he got a win, but he also got a. Uh, I think he got some revenge for those Atlanta. And, and, and trust me, this is a big thing. You know, anytime you get let go, and you know, Dan will admit it. Like, oh no, it's not a big deal. But deep down inside. I guarantee you, though, he's very, very happy to get that victory. You think Dan Quinn gets another opportunity to be a head coach in this league? I think what's happening is that Don't these, these owners it. and general managers are thinking more about offensive-minded guys. Now, if you look it's at an overcorrection, well, if you look at the AFC East, there's all those defensive coaches there. I mean, every one of those head coaches is a defensive guy. And so, you know, we'll see. But the way the football is nowadays, your ability to put up points, offense, score, all those things. I mean, I think that you know a guy like Kellen Moore probably gets a shot before Dan Quinn, who's taken a team to a Super Bowl. We'll see. I mean, it might be a deal where, you know, Dan is, uh, you know, he gets another opportunity. But my gut feeling is you'd probably lose Kellen more before you would lose uh, Dan Quinn. Off the top of your head, and this is college football, but I don't know that it'd be much different. Everybody from the deleting NFL. their comments under this thing. I can't find them. Offensive or defensive them. play callers ah, 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 ah. that have won national championships. Well, let's go to the podium. We got Dak here, real Dak. quick. Let's go to the podium. They, to to Dak. they deleted take all everything the that we can from that <laughs> and just uh, grow each and every day in practice this week to make sure that we came out and we had a better, uh, better performance, and we did that tonight. At what point during the week do you decide you want the ball if you win the toss like that? Uh, it wasn't part of my decision, but I'll take the ball every game. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys on the offense that want to start the game off on offense and we can go get a touchdown, and I'm sure the defense doesn't mind it when they take the field and we're up 7-0. So uh, that, that's Coach McCarthy and uh, the coach's decision there. Derek, you said after the game last week you wanted other teams to defend you guys the way Denver did last week. Yeah. Get them back. Yeah, they tried that early, and I think, um, as, as I said last week, the reason I wanted it is because we didn't play a good game. And... If they think that was the, the recipe uh, for success against us, then um, good luck to them. Uh, we know what we're capable of, my, and I think uh, last week was uh, something, something we needed in the that's sense of just refocusing, recentering, and realizing uh, this is the NFL, and it's tough, and you've got, you've got to earn it each and every day at practice, and then you've got to come out on Sundays and, and earn it again. Well, after last Sunday, you couldn't get this Sunday here quick enough to get that touched out of your mouth, could you? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you wanted to come fast, but I knew there was a lot of work to do throughout the week. So uh, it was important yeah. to take it day by day yeah. and focus on getting better. Um, I wanted to use every day of the week to make sure I got better at my footwork and all the things that I, I thought I needed to make sure I didn't repeat the performance from last week. And I'm sure a lot of the other guys that took account, uh, accountability for that loss last week wanted to do the same. So um, as a team, we focused in. We had a great week of, of practice and preparation, and then we were able to come out and uh, compliment each other on all three phases of the game this week, uh, Sunday. What did that say about the team last week? Easily your worst performance of this season. You yeah, have several sure. seasons. This week, you scored more points in the second quarter than any team in Cowboys history. I mean, you maybe have the best performance you guys have had in years. Yeah, a resilient team, a team that's uh, very aware of what we're capable of. And as I said, I don't want to say last week was – last week just wasn't us. And, and, and everybody in that locker room knows that. And um, it, it left a bad taste in our mouth. And I think it's a taste that we need, as I said, to understand that yeah. how tough this game is. But tonight just showed that when we focus in, we take it one play at a time, when our heart and our minds are where our feet are, um, we're capable of doing some great things. And so we've just got to continue to focus on that and uh, take it play by play, game by game. Mm. And uh, we'll continue to get better and uh, hopefully have a lot more performances like this. Was there a throw or a play in the game where you felt your footwork was back to what it was, the back to normal after last week? I'd say pra I'd say the, uh, the pregame. And I think it just came from practice and everything, as I said, that I wanted to get back to working on, um, just getting tuned back in to my footwork, using my hips, um, just, just getting everything that therefore I knew the ball would be popping out of my hands um, so there wasn't necessarily a throw in the game but I know in pregame uh, I felt good and I felt good about where I was and my body being synced in and we're able to go out, uh, go out there and get back to uh, the player that I believe I am 
Speaking what of statement? your footwork, could you describe your <coughs> touchdown run and footwork? You scared a lot of people when you ran in there, but what were you thinking when you went in? <laughs> you were scared you. He ain't scared uh, all of us. Yeah, I mean, I had to reestablish some toughness, you know. I mean, uh, but but more so than anything, uh, rolled out, had a, had an option to pass. I felt like it was an obvious hold uh, right there on Sprinkle, but at that point, I was actually getting ready to dive and just didn't want the ball to, to go off a guy's leg or something like that and realized I had the defender squared up. And at that point, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the goal line. I told you guys uh, earlier in the year. I mean, certain plays, certain positions on the field. Uh, I'm gonna go back to what just my instincts and, and get going to get the touchdown to the first down. But being smart about it. So yeah, coming, coming off and line line up wide and, and blocking the CD Lamb now. It's gonna be part of the daily. Program. I mean, McGovern's great. He can line up wide and do that. He can get in the backfield and be a fullback. Uh, he can come in at right guard, left guard, wherever we need him. Um, he's a, he's a great player and great for this offense. And just uh, his versatility and how athletic he is 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 definitely helping us. And uh, he's a young player that that we're proud of. Also had him at eye back at the one touch one more time. Kellen also had him at eye back, you know, behind Zeke when he was up back on his last touchdown. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's a fullback or an offensive lineman, but uh, either way it goes, he's doing his job, and whatever we ask him to do, he comes in and he does it. And um, he's he's a big part of this offense, helps us out a lot. No doubt. Teams were blitzing you like crazy the first couple weeks of the season, and now a couple weeks in a row they aren't blitzing you. Again, today they didn't blitz you very much. Do you kind of feel like in your game you're starting to show that you can solve no matter what the problem is on the other side and you, you feel comfortable both ways no matter what they say? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it goes into the preparation that I put into this game and Get not him, just Zach. me but this whole offense of us being on the same page and all 11 being on the same page, whether they, they think they can scheme up a blitz to get home. Um, if we're all on the same page, um, we're going to be able to, to execute regardless. Uh, receivers knowing their hots and sights, offensive line knowing who's a, who's accountable in the protection, uh, and then I'm just the product of of delivering the ball. But it takes all of all eleven of us to to defeat the blitz or whether they don't blitz us. Um, and, and it's great. It's just great to have have a group like that just communicates and takes pride in in their job and their role. I really appreciate two uh, early fourth <clears throat> down conversions. And you, you've been doing that all season, just kind of the tone that sets beyond any individual game. What it says about where you guys are as a group offensively. The fourth downs? Yeah, the two fourth downs. The Eagles playing Yeah, I mean, it was huge. Uh, that, that's, that's where we missed on last <laughs> week. Uh, obviously, I missed the throw last week. Uh, the second one, uh, the first one we missed on the run. The second one I missed on the throw and just able to convert these two this week. I mean, it just shows trust in the in the head coach that he has in this offense and this group. And, um Often, this offense is, is a great group that trusts and believes in one another. As I said, everybody knows that they have a job and that not, not one role or one job is more important than the other. And everybody takes pride in that and they go out there and they do their job, whether it's first down or fourth down. Everybody knows the importance of it. After yeah, the pre-game you said warm-up, up, you guys felt like you had gotten maybe a little overconfident. How do you guard against that going forward? And what does a game like this, what kind of statement does a performance like this make coming up? Uh, I don't know if we're necessarily into the whole trying to make statements. We're just trying to continue to get better and take it take it game by game. And um, when you're in the game, play by play. And I think when when we do that, we're capable of of yeah. um, accomplishing whatever we want. So um, we're not going to get overconfident again. That, that's what a game like last week does for you. Leaves that taste in your mouth and keeps you humbled and make sure that you stay hungry and that you don't get uh, too ahead of yourself. And so uh, we're going to continue to continue to get better. We're going to use this one and learn from it, grow from it. Uh, Celebrate it, obviously, but move forward and turn the page to the Chiefs next week. Yeah, pre game warm up, uh, you were you got everybody huddled up, and I know you've done that before, but yeah. it just seemed like you were maybe even a little bit more fired up, had a few expletives. Just what did you kind of share with the team before you guys went in there? We're counting the, the expletives now, huh? Uh, uh. Um, I mean, I don't know Get if I was necessarily back. more fired up than than any other week. I did it in Patriots. Um, I didn't do it. I did it. Obviously, didn't do it in Minnesota. Not planned. Didn't do it last week, and then I felt some type of way about not doing it last week. So I wanted to make sure I just got back to it. And I think that's something y'all continue to just see me do throughout the throughout the season. Uh, just another chance for me to talk to obviously the offense that I talk to a lot, but the whole team, the defense and the Get special em. teams, and maybe guys that don't hear from me often, just to tell them what I'm thinking, tell them what we we need to do as a team, and. 
um, we needed to rebound and we needed to respond. And uh, wh wh whether I use a couple of words or not, yeah. um, that's just the emotion and the passion that I have for this game. And not only me in the locker room, Anthony Brown did an amazing, amazing job at what he said and the way he got this team going. And that's just the leader stepping up and uh, making sure that we're all in the right mindset. Keep cussing What a game, game for Dak Prescott. Keep Quite the bounce him. back. That is certainly the storyline following the Cowboys' 43-3 to victory over the Atlanta Falcons inside AT&T Stadium. I am Ari Temkin. Uh, they cut the commercial. But, hey, keep cussing at them, Dak. If that was going to fire up this team, then if you got to say a few cuss words, that's okay. That's okay. Fire them up, you know. You know. Hey, you got to do whatever you can to get, them, get those boys crunk to relate to them. That's what you got to do. So, Dak Prescott, keep bringing that energy. Uh, hey, Guess who got the game ball? The coach got the game ball. And uh, let's see if we can find that clip right quick. Appreciate everybody for watching. Shout out to John Mishota. Uh, <laughs> now we're presented game ball to Dan Quinn. <laughs> oh, my ears, it killed me. Okay, I didn't know it was going to be that loud, Cowboy Nation. Let's, let's do it again, let's, the game ball. Now we're presented... Game ball to Dan Quinn. Oh, it's still loud. Right. Okay. Oh, my God, man. That was very emotional, man. Uh, shout out to Dak Prescott, man. Uh, shout out to Dan Quinn. Shout out to everybody, man. Uh, appreciate 105.3, the fan. Yeah, yeah, we eating, we cooking. Shout out to Skywalker, victory cookout. Tomorrow going to be lit. Yeah. <laughs> Cowboys, uh, Dak Prescott said uh, Falcons tried it earlier. Yeah. Hey, and one of the most important part of um, my ears are still ringing. God, dog, my ears are ringing. Uh, ah, my ears. I might be deaf law over here, man. <laughs> Y'all had to do sign language now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mm. One of the most important thing about what Dak Prescott said, and I want you guys to understand at the end of it, he said, we got to celebrate this moment, and then we focus in on the Chiefs. So for all of the Cowboy fans who want to really nitpick, I, I, I just want you guys to understand we just beat a team by 40 points. There's nothing to nitpick about. Not today, at least for today. Can you give us 24 hours? to celebrate this one. Uh, Y'all already know what I'm about to say. L-I-S. Let it shine because last week you understood what happened, right? You got that vibe. You got that feeling. So L-I-S, let it shine, baby. Let it shine. And, and celebrate this one. Celebrate this one all the way until at least Tuesday. And then you say, okay, all right, cool. Or, or middle part of Monday, you know. And we'll check out everything else. Your head. We check out everything else because that's how I'm looking at it. You know, of course, I've seen somebody say too many penalties, too many this, too many that. I get it. But right now, can you imagine feeling the way we felt last week? And if we could last week, we would be happy with it, right? But this loss was necessary. And can you imagine being the Atlanta Falcons right now? Of how they feeling. And they got to get on a plane. Some of them drove. And you know what I'm saying? And, and they were saying, rise up. <laughs> I wanted to say, wise up. You know, wise up. Because y'all facing against a team. That's coming off of a loss. That everybody, mama, uncle, cousin, Tupac, and Biggie. Was talking bad about them. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so Dallas Cowboys came with it today. So instead of rise up, you know, R-I-S-E, they need to wise up and understand that they went into a bird trap. You know, everybody want to talk about trap. They went into a bird trap in Arlington, and they can't fly out. Yeah, so for all of the Atlanta fans, you know, you know, we got a special button that we like to play around here, and we want you guys to be okay. But out of respect for all of the Atlanta fans, Let's just say ATL in a moment of silence. It's as 
same. It's a shame what they did to those birds, baby. It's a shame. <laughs> Person boot camps. And- oh, my goodness. ATL. I can't wait to chop up that clip that we got the Atlanta fans. They came to the Cowboys Experience event. They came out there with their chest out, boldly, with all of that red mess and black on, walking around our area, talking about they finna beat us down, or, or rise up, or something like that. They're, they're saying, instead of how about the Cowboys, they like rise up. And we sitting here talking to the mighty Jay Novacek, three-time Super Bowl champion, and they still all in the clip talking about ATL and and rise up and all of this stuff. <laughs> I just hope that their plane can make it to ATL better than what they showed in the exhibit and they exuded out there on the field. We hope that we can get them up out of Dallas better than how they were playing in Texas Stadium. Let's go. Keep it rolling, baby. Yeah. They still it's still on commercial break. Yeah. ATL has left the building. Oh, no. <laughs> Perez, what's good? <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. No mercy, baby. The only person, you know, that they get the MVP, they get the MVP for, dare I say, Atlanta Falcons, is this guy right here. You know, he, he was more of a contributor to the game than – Matt Ryan, Hall of Famer. You know, that's what they call Hall of Famer Matt Ryan. You know, <laughs> get out of the way, man. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Um, and they're, they're, they're just such super – and they do. They get so excited. And then, when, you know, I, I've done stuff with them before. Um, like, I'll describe a play like we used to do on the board and stuff, and, and Victor would come in and then after me would describe the same play in Spanish. And he, he had a flair for making the play sound a lot better – than I ever had, so uh, good for him. Uh, once again, uh, another outstanding call by him. Vaqueros 43, Falcons 3. Cowboys win by 40. This is the largest win for the Cowboys in terms of spread since 2000. 21 years, 48-7. Uh, to 7. Cowboys over the Arizona Cardinals. A 40-point win. This game was basically over at halftime. Taking your phone calls, your thoughts at 877-881-1053. 877-881-1053. Postgame show is brought to you by Geico. Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to Geico. Go to geico.com. And in 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on car insurance. CeeDee Lamb, uh, spectacular in this game. Six for 94 and two touchdowns. But he left this game early, did not return. It is uh, a arm contusion. That is what the Cowboys called it. Christy Scales letting me know that um, it was his right bicep. Mm. They put a big bandage on it, but he can never go back into the game. Um, but probably a big part of that is you're up, you know, you're basically up by 30 some points right. going into halftime. So no need. Uh, but did leave this game, did not return arm contusion with that right biceps. Yep. You know, another well. one, too, is the, the situation where uh, with, also with CD, he took off his blue undershirt. Once he figured out he wasn't going to get fined, he went back to his old way of playing football, so good for him. Hopefully he'll be okay. We'll kind of follow up They're and see if we can get some information on that. Here is C.D. Lamb meeting with the media and after listen the game. listen to C.D. Lamb. C.D.? Waiting on C.D. Lamb. Here, here we go. How the team responded today coming out of that game last week? Uh, I feel like we dominated today, um, played the way we know how to play. Uh, we preach, you know, just stay the course, stay, stay, just handle your business uh, when you're one individual matchup, and that we did today. How much fun was it for you today? It like every time you made a play, you were just smiling, even when they tackled you, but you were just having a ball. Uh, that's me. That's me just about every time, every opportunity I get. You know, I'm grateful for each and every one. And uh, today it was just, you know, it was fun. Come out with some energy. Uh, we came out firing early, and that we liked as a team, and, and that's, that's, that's ultimately the result we got. You think your touchdown set the tone, and can you describe that play? Uh, I felt like the tone was already set. Uh, Get from him, the CD. We walked in the building. Um, I felt like together, um, we came in with the with the right mindset, right game plan, and just came in and attacked the day. <laughs> uh, me scoring early, I, it was you know a confidence booster, and I felt like we just took it. The screen with the governor out there with you. Just talk about that and just decided to hit my team lined up. Oh, it's easy running screens behind him. Uh, it's very easy. You know, him on the corner, obviously the corner wouldn't like to see that. But, uh, 
you know, uh, obviously we got we it started off the game. Um, big play. You know, uh, always exciting, and um, you know, I, I congratulate him for the block, and it was it was huge. Did this show that last week was sort of a fluke in your mind? Uh, if that's the word you want to use for it, that's fine. But uh, Get we up, definitely we we won ourselves last week, and it's understood. You how much better last did you feel week with your ankle about today as opposed to the last week? How much better did you feel physically with your ankle this week as opposed to last week? A lot better. Uh, I was able to, you know, cut, kind of just move without thinking about anything, and um, ultimately everything we just fell into place, and you know everything worked out. How much air did Dak put on that second one to you? A lot. So I had enough. I had enough to to turn around and see the trajectory of the ball, and it was still in there. So uh, I appreciate him for trusting me, and uh, you know they ran cover zero, and I, I just had to win on my row. So how quickly do you pick the ball up when you know when you're coming out of your break to see where it's at? Just got to look in the air, no matter. If I know it's coming to me or not, um, just just know any opportunity is mine, and uh, I'm excited for it. Before the game, you ran across the uh, uniform police. Did you have a chance to talk about the fire? You no, know I did. You know I did. It was. I was just like, like man, what's up? Like, what do I need to do? Uh, you know. But uh, no, it's all great vibes. Great dude. Um, we came to an understanding, and uh, hopefully, we should not be seeing any more <laughs> anytime soon. But they're getting confused because you got like a blue undershirt or some yep. sort, and they see that. So they like, you should see that, or did you talk to them about that? No, nah, it was kind of just showing skin. Um, they didn't. They wasn't really much of a fan of it. So just having pretty much my whole yeah. body covered uh, was what he was looking for. So like I said, talking to him yeah, pregame kind of made it a lot easier for me to really understand what he's looking for. And you know, we got. Did you get your arm dinged on that free play, and then it kind of they just once the score got a hand, they said, okay, mm -hmm. let's take you out. Most deaf. Um, it was like a Charlie horse in my arm that kept just really just you know nagging. So, I mean, I guess yeah, pretty much. Called it a Charlie horse in his arm. Yeah, but keep na kept nagging. So wouldn't go away. Charlie horse, they go away quickly. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> that's that's not. But Charlie horse makes it seem like oh, no big deal. He got bumped. Yeah, he got bumped on there probably. Contusion. You know, contusion. Contusion. That's what they called it. The press box contusion. I told you about the uniform police, though. You did. Yeah, that's, that's the shirt, crazy. man. You and, wear and the I, blue undershirt. They and don't. You said the whole thing was the skin. That's exactly yeah, what yeah, CD Lamb yeah. said. They're not he, about yeah, him showing skin. Yeah, in college football, they and and you know what he he did when he went back out there though, like in that game, he made a play and he kept pulling on his shirt, you know, because he knew, but he had taken off the blue undershirt. Okay, so so you get used. Take to, me through what. So he, we're going to have a post-game show well, talking about no, this. No, but this is very intriguing. <laughs> right, He's got right, the blue right. undershirt on. Yeah. At what point, like, but he doesn't have to wear it the whole game? At what point? I think once he gets past the, once he gets past the initial going onto the field, that's silly. then that's all he worries about. It's that's all initial, bets are off. So, you, yeah, you meet with the uniform official I before think it's the Tony game. Hill. I think it's Tony Hill, the former cow. I think it's him. <laughs> and, you, yeah, he went up to me, gave him a hug, and he's like, listen, man, you're killing me on these fines. And Tony probably told him, hey, you're showing too much skin like a college game, you know, when they no, wear the half skin, jerseys right. and stuff like that. But CD might not want to play with a full, I mean, you know, sometimes these guys just. Clearly he doesn't. When they he's move, paid lots of money yeah, not to. when they to. move, it's just, it doesn't feel comfortable. It's like maybe restricted to him. And so once he kind of figured out that he was in the clear and nobody was going to get him, he then took that undershirt off and then started playing the way he normally plays. And then I asked you before the game, Zeke. Zeke also has that. He likes to show his his yeah, upper belly. But he pulled. But he pulled the shirt down. So that's just a pregame. deal. That's just a pregame deal. That's that's a total pregame thing. Right there. <laughs> but doesn't he have to meet with the uniform police at some point? Or well, no? I think that Tony knows that Zeke is going to pull the jersey <laughs> down. Yeah, I think he knows. If that. If I'm CD, I'm confused because I'm like I'd see Zeke every week. Yeah. Without the what's the what's the midriff? What's yeah. the deal with that? He's not playing that way, right? See, that's the way when CD like when you see him catch passes and stuff, right? Yeah, his jersey goes up. So no. yeah, I mean, did you ever notice that before? Like, would you ever ever known this was something? Oh, I know why he's getting fined. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there's things I I noticed the weirdest things. I always watch tape, and I know that uh, Lee Corso's on the sidelines because <laughs> I always see him on the tape. You know, so I always notice the things that people don't like. If the mascots are doing something crazy on the sidelines, I always notice that too. Cowboys so, yeah. forty three Falcons. I'm sure, people three. don't care anything. No, about it's, right. of course just, they do. They've got said. to. Yeah, I mean, how could you not? It, it's. I mean, 
I don't think it's going to eventually lead to a suspension, but dude's getting fined oh, thousands no, he's getting, and thousands yeah, he of is. dollars every he week. Is. And you know, and he that's why he went over there. He went over to say, Okay, bro, what do we give me give me a prank? Give me here. something here. Tell me what I'm tell me what I'm doing wrong. Uh, and <laughs> and I'm sure that they told him what he's doing wrong. Yeah. Eight seven seven eight eight one one oh five three. That is the number to get into the post game show, eight seven seven eight eight one one oh five three. Today's game between the Atlanta Falcons and the Dallas Cowboys at AT T Stadium was brought to you by the American Airlines, the official airline of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's talk with Josh in Dallas. Go ahead, Josh, you're on the Dallas Cowboys post game show. Yes, sir. How about them Cowboys, man? We did our thing today. I'm very, very happy that we came out and we was focused and we was ready to play in this game. You know, um, like uh, I'm, uh, the, the the biggest thing that I'm happy of that we have not had in, in years upon years is a special team that is ready to play. And I'm very, very happy that we got a really, really good special team. So, Johnny Bones. You know what I'm saying? And then also, too, with um, with Diggs and uh, Dak and – and uh, Zeke and, and, and everybody else, CD and everybody, everybody played well today, and I'm very, very happy. Appreciate the phone call, Josh. Yeah, Josh is right, though. The special teams, I was very critical of uh, Bones. second, yeah, Bones in the second week of the season. They go after the block when it's third and 19, and they're going to punt yeah. the ball back to Dak Prescott with two minutes left and a half. Three blocks You know, that's season, kind of the senseless crazy. thing to do. But, yeah, you know, and how about today? You know, we were so worried coming in about kickoffs, and they kicked off a ton today. Come on, Pat. I don't think they had uh, the Falcons had one kickoff return, if I'm not mistaken, at all. It, so that, I, I think, it was a weird approach too, because it wasn't as if a few of them went into the end zone. I thought could Pat, have been fielded by Cordero yeah, Patterson. I thought Patterson was going to bring back. This was a strange game for the Falcons overall, but you know, they give the Cowboys a lot of credit, and you know, they handled they handled the kick coverage stuff. They got the block when they needed the block. I mean, they they, they really took advantage of of the you know Colquitt. I mean, you watch him on tape; he's so slow, right. and deliberate right. the way he hands. They and almost got to the they first almost one. got the first one, and that happened last week too when they blocked the punt last week. They almost got to the first one, and that's why they went after and they got it. So yeah, it's uh you know good for good for the Cowboys of uh, handling those situations. And in terms of the caller says they came ready to play. You know, and, and I get that that's an easy narrative out of last week's game. Brian, I thought you brought this up last week, and it's really important to note. Like, sure, the Cowboys' offense went maybe sleepwalking a little bit, but, like, they got beat up up front they on did. both sides of the football. They did. Let's not act like, oh, man, they just, if they have to show up and they're ready to play, they'll beat anybody. Like, there were things that Denver did. Denver ran the ball down their throats. They completely absolutely. controlled 180 the yards, scrimmage. yeah, absolutely. The Falcons... I mean, their running game was, yeah. as it's been all season, was non existent there. This thing could have gone differently if, first few drives of the game, the Cowboys score, Falcons score, Cowboys score, Falcons score, as opposed to Cowboys score, Falcons field goal, Cowboys score, Falcons da- oh, turn yeah. on downs. If their running game had gotten rolling like Denver's last week, this thing could have gone differently. Yeah, before we go to break, real quick here, I just want to say they had a chance, Falcons had a chance in that first drive for a pick six. And they didn't get it. You know, the ball they was thrown out in yep. the flat there, and they yep. did not get that. And that, that might have been something that could have been switched this seven. game up a little bit, at no. least to start. And this <laughs> isn't to throw dirt on a win, and it's a great no, no, win, yeah. and it is. But the idea of, like, well, they came ready this week. It yeah. wasn't just that they yeah. Yeah. weren't ready or whatever other platitude you want to throw on last week's outcome. Sure. Let's not forget that Denver, as you mentioned last week throughout the broadcast, controlled the lines of scrimmage on yeah. both sides of the football. They sure did. Brian brought us Ari Temkin. And it's important to note that when you lose, sometimes you've got positives, but we only focus on the negatives. When you- yeah, 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 yeah. But we, we would have, if there was a pick six, we would have won 43 to seven. <laughs> or 43 to six, because he probably would have missed the field goal, you know. Um, it would have been even better, man, if he'd have missed the field goal and been 43 to nothing. But uh, neither here nor there. Let's play a quick bill. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. I looked up the original root word or etymology of the word credit, and guess what it broke down to? Belief, faith, trust. Can you be trusted? <laughs> Can banks trust you? Because they're going to ask that question when it comes down to a loan with a home with a car to get a better interest rate to get better payments your credit score always comes down to trust trust can you be trusted well give it a boost i would recommend credit boosters first of all 
one of the main things I like about credit boosters is that they're credited. So you can trust them. Trust. So to get that credit boost that you deserve to where banks can trust you, make sure you go credit boosters to affordable credit repair because they're affordable with one set price. And the number is 214-232-4300. 214-232-4300. Get a boost. Yeah, yeah, appreciate everybody, man. Um, shout out to you, Coach Marv. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a few calls uh, after all of this stuff is done uh, as far as the uh, 105.3 defense. So just halt, stand back, and then I'm going to see if I can grab me something to eat. But but we'll see how we do all this. We're we going we're gonna to see how we do all of that because I like to to um, to get some of that information out as far as what they do, uh, as far as what they're talking about, and then we'll open up uh, the lines for your mind. But yeah, shout out to credit boosters, man, uh, and shout out to those who are participating in and helping this uh, that company out. Uh, appreciate them. Be sure to give them a phone call and shout out to uh, Boss Cowboy for that interview or that promotion read right there. Appreciate everybody, man. Boost my win to eight to two credit score. <laughs> Jay Worthy, yeah. Hey, we play against Kansas City Chiefs, so we'll see what we look like against them. You know. Uh, we'll see how all of those things look like. It, the craziest thing is, yeah, Ru Russell is looking rusty. Aaron Rodgers is going to be Aaron Rodgers, so it seems like it would be a good game for Aaron Rodgers to come back to make a statement. And I like what Dak Prescott said. It's not about making a statement. It's not about making a statement. And uh, and we got to get that thing going. I told you to grab that shovel. That shovel got magic, DJ. You, you ain't lying, dog. <laughs> Oh, hey, that shovel, dog. Every time I pick up that shovel, man, something good happened, man. Something good happened. I picked up the shovel. J. Ron Curse hit a dude so hard, he dropped the pass. Y'all remember that? I picked up the shovel, then all of a sudden, Diggs got him an INT. A.B. got him an INT. You know, Jordan Lewis got him an INT. Yeah. Appreciate your money out of the you know what, the two hundred and fiftieth person to make to hit that like button. Man, I really appreciate you, man. I really do. We have five hundred people watching. We should have five hundred likes, but I get it, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't care about me, man. Y'all don't care about me, man. Y'all just sitting up here watching, and man, it's free to hit that like button, man. You know, for the people that ain't hitting the like button. Shame. Shame, man. Shame. I could be eating some good food Shame. right now. Shame. You know what I'm saying? I could be eating some good food right about now. Proud. Hey, I could be eating some good food, man. <laughs> yeah. Atlanta Falcons, look, I want you guys to go watch the previous long live stream we had out there at Cowboys Experience and fast forward all the way to the end. And we had a group. We had, a, we had a group of Atlanta Falcons fans to come right in to the Cowboys event, and they was talking a lot of cash money. They was talking left and right of what they're going to do and how that was easy. How easy it's going to be for them to beat us down. And all I know now is that that lady that was saying that she going to be come meet her, she's somewhere hurrying it up. She probably ripped off all of that red and ripped off all of that black, and she's somewhere on the plane tucked down. <laughs> Probably with just the black, you know what I'm saying, so she can blend in. She's somewhere midway, I believe, right now, between Louisiana and Mississippi, hauling tail to Georgia right now. She said forget about flying. No, she saw what happened to Atlanta, so she got into a car, and she's driving right now. She rented a car to go drive all the way to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. Shame. <laughs> Shame. She's driving. She's going beyond the speed limit right now. You know, Texas, we don't really care, but you better slow down when you get in Louisiana, lady. Slow down when you get in Louisiana and Mississippi. Because Mississippi, Mississippi, you know how we do over here in Mississippi. 
<laughs> Shout out to you, B-No. Oh, y'all winning. Yo, I'm dropping my key. <laughs> uh, you, you dropping your Cowboys bandwagon application today, but it's still Jaguars to you the day that you die. Yo, wait a minute. You can't, you can't love us both. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't want you to be lukewarm, B-No. We want you to be hot for us, you know. <laughs> We we don't want you to be lukewarm, be new. Appreciate you for the donation, ladies and gentlemen. We got them. No, 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 no. But I appreciate you for the for the donation, though. <laughs> we want you to be fire hot over here. We want you to be hot. <laughs> Your base almost deteriorate uh, for a moment, and that can that makes everybody wonder. Well, this team, uh, in addition to uh, handle that beautifully today, and I think uh, gave us a lot to go forward with. When last time you seen a team play this good? Last time you seen that your team play this well on both sides of the ball, especially in the middle? I can't remember. I really can't. I can't. Uh, uh, I can't remember. I can go uh, way back, and we had some good games. I don't ever recall that many times when we had that kind of lead at halftime. But, and I know I don't recall because it's the first time you've had 29 points in one quarter right. and then have none. So, uh, no, I, I can't. Uh, uh, the way it was going, the turnovers, uh, uh, that couple with good execution offensively, and flying around the ball defensively. I can't I remember when we put it together. That so Vic Fangio didn't have a blueprint after all? Well, he may, but he's uh, got the secret sauce to implement it. <laughs> Maybe. I hope so. Because we might hope we don't have to see him until the Super Bowl. Hey, Jerry, what are your thoughts on Dak's touchdown run? Were you holding your breath at all when he runs the guy over at the goal line? I've, I have I have a concern when Dak uh, does take it in and uh, uh, it all goes to uh, what happened to you. I was glad to see Cooper Rush get some snaps up. I really thought... Uh, that, that was good. I thought uh, the way uh, we uh, left him in last week, I thought the coach might leave Dak in the fourth quarter <laughs> this way. <laughs> Thank you. That's tongue in cheek. Yeah. You all right there? Yeah. yeah. That's Jerry right. Wayne, yeah. baby. All right, that's Jerry Jones meeting with the media. The Cowboys 43 3 win over the Atlanta Falcons with Brian Broaddus. I'm Ari Temkin. Post game show brought to you by Papa John's. Better greetings, better pizza, Ooh, Papa John's. Oh, would make me hungry, Papa John's. But B New, I really appreciate you though. You can, you can send your application in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now, now the fee. If you gonna like the Cowboys and you gonna like the Jaguars, now that, that's that's a five hundred dollar fee. <laughs> that's initiation fee. <laughs> Payable to Law Nation, man. You can cash have it. You can cash have it right over here. <laughs> but I hope you got your credit booster. You know, but you cash at me right here, baby. You know? <laughs> hey, cash at me five hundred dollars, and, and what we gonna do? We gonna review your application. We gonna well, I'm gonna submit it to the committee, and we gonna accept you, yay or nay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do. <laughs> Appreciate you for the donation, man. Let me see if the AI can she speak to the, on that. Oh my goodness, man. Happy for Cam, ooh Cam. Oh, oh, she's late. She's late. She's super late, man. You, do do y'all agree with that, though? You know. <laughs> oh my goodness, Michael, man. He says I've never seen the Cowboys play dominant in my 32 years of living, I guess, or existing. Appreciate you, Michael Anthony, man. Appreciate you for your donations there. Uh, y- y'all, let me know if y'all will accept that application. You know. Uh, uh, uh look, look, background, look. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man! Uh, application denied. AJ, what? Well, what? It have to be a thousand. <laughs> Sean B said, first come, first serve basis. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> she enjoying the Sunday. That's what she doing. Shout out to the AI. She, why she gonna start speaking this too? And it didn't. You know, we have you. You have to be self critical about the situation. And you know, I, I'm sorry if you feel like we're always ripping your football team, but. Your football team did play well today, and, you know, we'll talk about that, too. Yeah, no, I mean, when you win, there's positives, there's negatives. When you lose, there's positives and negatives. Again, in football, we only focus on the negatives when they lose and the positives when they win, and yet there are both in both. Uh, This is an incredible win for a Cowboys team that bounced back and and was 
as impressive in this game offensively I, as they've been all year. I, there was a game that I remember, and I'm and I, I know Jerry, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give Jerry the question was asked to him when it, it was a game that you ever remember. And have you ever seen a game? Yeah. where they dominate all three levels like yeah, this? Yeah, the Cowboys beat the Colts, and I remember mm-hmm. this game played here at AT and T Stadium. Mm-hmm. And it was in 2014, and the Cowboys oh, yeah. won the NFC East. They were they went to 11 and four after this game. They scored 28 points in the first half, and then 14 in the yes. second. And it was a 42 to seven game, is what it was. And it was in front of 91,899. But it was December 21st mm. of 2014. Colts versus Cowboys, forty-two to seven, and I, and I, again, I do believe the Cowboys clinched the division after that game. Was that that wasn't the Des catch non catch year, was it? Yeah, it was Des catch uh, fourteen. Yeah, would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. would have been. Yeah. I don't know why I always have to bring that up when it yeah. comes to that season. But that was a that was as a dominant force of dominant game that I've ever you know seen the Cowboys play, especially you know here in, yeah. in recent memory. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five. It was the backup running back too. He had a big old play. Was it was it Dunbar? Was it Lance Dunbar? He had a big play in that game. Shout out to Lance Dunbar. One zero five three eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. Let's talk with Cameron in Fort Worth. Go ahead, Cameron. Yeah, You're on the Dallas okay. Cowboys Radio Network. Hey guys. Uh, so, so Brian, I got a quick question. Sure. You mentioned you mentioned that. I knew she was gonna start talking. Shout out to you, uh, the AI. You know, you know, she 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 started talking when everybody else started talking. She she hating today. Let me put her on pause. Let me see if I can pause. I've been a problem for this offense for the last couple of years, especially sure. with Dak. Uh, the Atlanta game last year, the Giants game earlier this year. Uh, do you know if, if uh, do you know what's causing that, and if they're doing anything to address that in house? No, I, I tell you what, I just I, I didn't think the ball was late coming to the outside. I just thought the safety made a hell of a break, and you know because from my vantage point, it was at the opposite end, and I saw I saw the break, and I'm thinking, oh no, yep. this thing's coming back. As soon as I saw the safety react, I'm thinking that thing is picked. And you know you, you caught a break there. That you now the, last week that's probably picked and coming back the other right. way. Today it's not it's not uh, not finished. You get an opportunity and then you go in and score. So no, I don't have a, a good uh, a good thought of why they've had some turnover problems in the first quarter. You know I will say some of the times I think though that Dak Prescott, you know he he really in that early part of the game will try and enforce some things. And I mean force some things in a good, good way. way. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, yeah. he's like trying to. Like oh geez that's best you know, force is probably the wrong word there, but he'll try. I mean he'll 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 try. And, the word is test, and and of course, if that's Justin Simmons, that's a pick. Let's be real with it. The the personnel is different, and I was telling people all the time, you got different personnel. You know Kareem Jackson, Justin Simmons, those boys, uh, Patrick Sertan and Will Fuller. I mean not Will Fuller, whatever the Fuller kid, whatever his name is. Those boys are good. I think it's Kyle Fuller, but whatever. You know, those boys are good. That was a good. This a good secondary unit, but they're losing right now. But um, I noticed that the defense kind of stepped it up. But what I wanted to get your opinion on um, do you feel that the Cowboys defense really stepped it up, or do you think the Atlanta Falcons offense just wasn't playing up to what they usually do? Well, the Falcons went to New Orleans. Thanks for the call. The Falcons went to New Orleans and won last week, and they did it by not rushing the football all that well. You know, you look at what you know what Patterson was able to do. I think he had 126 yards in receptions. They lack some skill players, but they have a quarterback that's you know we've talked about it in the pregame. The guy's working on like his ninth consecutive year of throwing for 4,000 yards. Now you really rattled him today, and you I didn't think that you could rattle Matt Ryan like that. But yeah, you know, you got after them. They became very one-dimensional. I mean, they they tried to run the ball. They had limited success. I thought, man, they were going to get. But the whole thing was your offense put them in a fourteen to three hole, you know. And now your defense can play out of that. And it just they were able to get off the field. You give Jordan Lewis credit. You give Armstrong some credit. The way they were able to rush the passer. You give Micah Parsons some credit for the sack he has. They covered on the back end. I mean. Just everything that you didn't do very well last week was able to show up. And I think with this defense, 
I, they played well. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't that Atlanta was terrible. It was they that defense actually played well, and, but they played well with the lead, and they were able to, to allow just to keep giving the ball back to their offense and their offense. And, hell, they got a special teams touchdown today, too, off a block punt. So, you know, you get a block punt in a game, you're usually going to win that football game. He's yeah, and, and the thing, I, I just don't He's understand how you can be that bad at running back in terms of personnel in the NFL. Like, you find guys... That sixth, seventh round picks, that undrafted free agents that yeah. can consistently run the ball. Like you're looking at the stable of running backs for the Falcons with Cordero Patterson, Gallman, and, and Gallman, and yeah. Mike Davis. Yeah. It's like you, there's, it's, it's hard to be that bad from a personnel standpoint. Yeah. in your running game. Well, I'll tell you what. In talking to their scouts about it, though, they really, really miss like Calvin Ridley. You know, I mean, and that and that is a and that's a well, thing. Well, and that, he made Julio Jones expendable. Exactly. You probably don't trade Jones. Exactly. If you know you're going to be losing. Ridley. Exactly. Yeah. They 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 went they from ain't being one of, today. they went from being one of the most feared teams on the outside to being a team that you could pretty much. Can you imagine having Jones, Ridley, and then Pitts, all three playing? I mean, that would be no a night, nightmare exactly right. scenario to deal with. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, and remember, it's important to note Ridley. Has been dealing with mental health issues. Yeah, he struggled with. You know, I was talking like to these scouts, and it, it's been something that, you know, he has had to deal with a lot. And there's things that have happened in his life that have affected him. I, I don't want to get into him here on the radio, but mm. trust me, it's it's some pretty significant stuff that uh, that he's dealing with. All right, eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. Let's talk with Rodney in Fort Worth. Go ahead, Rodney. You're on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Hey guys. That was a great game that we just saw, but that leads me to ask, uh, Brian, since you've been in the front office, does a game like this uh, light a fire under Jerry and Stephen Jones to re-sign all of our starters? You know, I think that's it's one of those things that... Appreciate the, the phone yeah, call, Yeah, good call. I mean, I, you know, the thing I think that you... They really... You know, you have a plan, really, for what you want it to do. And I think the first step of their plan was to move on from Jalen Smith. I think it's the first step. Now, you know, resigning all your guys, is it possible? I, I don't think so. I think there's going to be some guys that they're, they're going to have to determine, hey, we can't keep this guy or we can't keep this guy. But you might say, well, wait, the way we can keep this guy is do you move on from others? And there's some guys that are currently under contract that I feel like that, that are some high-dollar guys. And this is, again, springtime talk. This shouldn't be right. Cowboys postgame talk. Right, right, right. But, yeah, this is more about they have a plan. Stephen Jones talks about the spreadsheet. I know Adam Pacifica. I know Todd Williams. I know they're cap guys. They've got stuff mapped out going forward. All the, the different scenarios like, okay, if we, if we adjust our players' rosters this way or we adjust it this way. So – Going out and saying, is one game going to make a difference on that? No. I, I don't think so. How much, though, sticking to that, and you're right, this is an off-season conversation, but it's interesting to note, too, that there's about to be a bunch of money infused in yeah. the NFL with this new TV deal. Right. The seller cap is going to shoot up over the next couple of years. Yeah. It remains to be seen how they'll do that, but, I mean, we're talking about a situation in which the seller cap could double over the next couple of years. Yeah. How much does that then factor into that plan from the organization's perspective. See, yeah, I think it does, but 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 you also I don't think the league and talking to people around the league about the cap and and I hope I'm not talking out of my rear here, but I'm ta- I've been talking to some folks that are front office guys that do this cap stuff and they don't think the cap is going to be one of those things where it goes like up like, you know, 50 million all of a sudden. I mean, they, they the league wants to make sure that it has that ability to say Okay, we'll go up small increments. They could smooth it. Yeah. The problem yeah. is Make the, the trans- Players Association could fight back at yeah, that because exactly. that impacts their clients. But but that's what I'm saying. They've got they've got this thing already they got the collective bargaining thing already right. done. You know, nice. so yeah, I, I just kind of feel like that, you know, don't look for this thing to go up fifty million dollars and all of a sudden everybody's flush with cash and you can sign everybody you want. I think it's going to be a couple of years before we see the money really, really get to where it needs to be. And even then, salaries will then become overinflated, right? So yeah. it's not – you'll have more money to play with. The problem is because of that, players are going to be getting more money at certain positions. So it's just, it's just like inflation. There's going to be more money to spend, but – you're then going to be spending more money on certain players. It's, going to, it's just going to rise the cost. Yeah, of each the Cowboys. Player. I think the Cowboys are going to have to do some drastic things for their cap next year. I really do. And mm. again, mm. I think it's. I think everybody is whether it's star players or 
mid-level players, backup players, whatever, I think there's a lot of decisions that still have to be made about that. And, and it's very important to note, this is the reason the draft is so important. They love the draft here. The Rams and hate you have the, to. Yeah, the Rams hate the draft. You love the draft. But you have to because of that. You yep. get guaranteed contracts, yep. cheap money. It's all about getting players to outperform the amount of money you pay them. The problem is guys on their second and third deals rarely outperform the amount of money they're getting paid. Rookies and second year and third year and fourth year rookies, young players on their first contracts usually outperform that stuff. All right, let's talk about this tough stretch now coming up for the Cowboys. And, and it it's shows up at the same time every year, but how do they manage it this year with the games that they have? We'll get to that coming up. Plus, Trayvon Diggs, Jordan Lewis, Micah Parsons, Zeke Elliott, all of them on the way, and your phone calls as well, your texts, 877 Appreciate everybody. Call my phone, hit my line, only ones who down Yo, y'all already know how they go. Keep it super thumb, Let's go. Got a long it day. Thumb, it's good. Call my phone, hit my line, only ones who down for Y'all know how it's gonna go. Keep it super thumb, my way, on this side. Keep it super thumb, my way, on this side. My with my brothers, there's no question, keep it real. You are the only participant in the conference. We finna finna open up this line. All participants Um, are muted. We gonna get out of here a little sooner before I pass out over here. But uh, we gonna keep the phone line short. Um, Spit spit what's on your mind and then um, let someone else get in. And... um, we're going to get it going the best way possible, Cowboy Nation. So the phone line, I'm going to put it in the chat. Let me put it in the chat right quick. Hotline. Same ones in your corner on the sea far. Now I only need a hand to count the ones who ball, ball with me. Down ball, ball with me. me. Down to put it on the line when lose a draw with me. Those my brothers, different mothers, part of power with me. Got the body to my class, she break hey, the We got the lunatic, you live. Law Cowboys Nation, are mm. we not entertained? Yeah. Are we not entertained? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This is the NFL. We've got to take our butt whippings. Then we regroup and we hand out those butt whippings. Oh, yeah. We hand it out. Complete team win. Complete. And shout out to McCarthy on Friday doing that player bingo. What does that mean? Hey, your number comes up. You go up and share a story about yourself. Brotherhood. Mm. Brotherhood, that's what gets this team to knights them. He knew he needed 87 players in 2010 in Green Bay when they won the Super Bowl. He knows we're going to need those players also because you never know because of the injuries. But mm. great team win. Jay J- Lou, A.B., our cornerback, too, who we wanted to kick off our bridge. He's got three interceptions. <laughs> oh, it continues. The team is popping. Cowboys Nation, enjoy this. Enjoy this today, and let's get ready and make that statement win again against the Chiefs and Patty Mahomes. Go, Cowboys. Puro pinche Cowboys. And yeah, haters, keep calling, keep texting. We them seven and two boys now. Yo, go, Cowboys. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's the energy I need. We got the two, one, four. You're live. Two one four. Two one four. All right, we got the six one four. You live now, Montana. Hello. Can we get the purge horn, please? Oh yeah. On command. I got you. Man, I told y'all. Everybody start throwing them numbers out. Oh, AJ two well numbers is this. Yeah. Matt Ryan numbers is this. Yeah, he's you oh, you called out Matt Ryan earlier. He's early. doing oh, yeah. this. He's doing that. They know Dan Quinn. No, you don't. 
You don't know Dan Quinn. This is not Dan Quinn with the Falcons, sir. This is Dan Quinn with the Cowboys, sir. Yo. Different team, different years. Different person, different players. Mm. I don't want to hear that. I'm tired yeah. of everybody keep talking about, oh, well, I fear this. Stop being scary. Your team is good. Mm. They just dropped the ball last week. That's it. Okay, it happens to the best of the everybody. Mm. Ali got knocked down. He lost. Yeah. Tyson got put to the lead. He lost. It happens to the best of everybody. It don't matter who you are. It's just about how you respond. That's what it is. No doubt. And these boys responded well. I'm proud of y'all, man. Congratulations, man. Y'all didn't let the reps dictate the game. The coaches didn't outcoach themselves. They played within themselves, and they coached within themselves. Mm. They said, hey, y'all, we messed up. We were smelling ourselves. Come back down. We got to finish the season out first, and then we can smell ourselves once we hold that Lombardi. Go Cowboys. Have a good day. Appreciate you, man. 808, man, my dog. Good call from him, man. Good call from him. And now we have a get y'all mind together, get y'all thoughts together. I need to see before she even open up her mouth. I need to see P V O. And if you don't know, you need to know. You need to know who this lady is. Lady Jessica, you're live. Hey Long, how's everything going? Great, great. Not hold you long. You remember, Law, do you remember when I said that that need to get on both sides, on defense, they need to get on the left, they need to get on the right, and they need to cover that middle? Right. Did I not see that? Did you not see it? Did we all not see what I said they need to do? Mm. And defense did that. I said, D, I want him to get more than one, but he got him one. Then A.B. A- got him one. Did J. look what? Okay. And all of this talking about, oh, that's just the Falcons. Oh, it's the NVL, NV, NFL team, and they won. They got 43 to zero. They showed you who they were. That cost this. Winners were about winning. Mm. And that is what they did. They mm. went out there and they balled. Like I told y'all, I said, don't count out them. I said, we got players who have not played yet, that we did see a little something out of them in the draft season, uh, during the uh, preseason. Y'all sitting up here talking about all this, all that. Stop the panicking, people. Our team is who they are, winners. Stop downing the boys. If you're going to be for them, be for them. If you're not, just get on off the ship and don't come back. Oh my god. Y'all goodness. be blessed. Let's get ready for these Chiefs. We have a football team who wants to go to the big show, people. Their eyes are on the prize. You can't get to the big show with your hands in back behind you. You got to focus on what's in front of you, not what's behind you. Because what's behind you can't touch you. You trying to get to the what's in front. Let's mm. go. Lady Jessica, baby. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you so much for your alert words there. Kind words. PVO all day. Hey, we love it. We love it. We love it. Hey, I hate to be the person that got to call up behind her. You know what I'm saying? Because she always bringing the thunder. Nine too old. What do you know? What is happening, Law? Everything is great. <laughs> Tom? Is Tom? Hey, man. Hey, it's this first time I've ever called anyone about anything about sports, but I want to tell you something. I've been a Cowboys fan since 1988, and uh, you know, you one of the things I love about you, Law, is how you take us to church. You know appreciate what I mean? It, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. And uh, I'll tell you what. This year, this team. You know, hey, what's the what's the one word you could say about 1992 Cowboys? Uh, it's playmakers, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Michael Irvin play, making plays. Today, you saw everybody got embarrassed about 
the Broncos last week, and they started making plays. Right. Browns have got an interception. Yeah. Diggs got another interception. They all step up because they believe in what they're doing, man. And I'll tell you what, I got inspired today. And you know what? It's It was – Man, it, everybody was so sad about the Broncos. And, and you know, last week I was like, you know what? They needed that. Right. They needed they needed the inspiration. And mm-hmm. I think everybody's got inspired. Dak got inspired. Zeke got inspired. CD got inspired. You know, I, I see big things out of this team, man. And, mm. I, and it's a spiritual thing. Mm. It's, it's I got your back, man. And I have not seen this since. I have not seen this since 1993, man. Oh, my goodness, man. And I appreciate I'm just you. so proud of my Cowboys, man, and I love your show, dude. I'll give it back to you, man. Thank you very much for having my call. Thank you, man. Oh, my goodness. Words words like that goes a long way and not a short way. I really appreciate people when they call in. And, 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 and look, 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 I get it. You know, we, we get our highs, we get our lows, we get our disagreements, we get our agreements. But at the end of the day, this is a game that uh, these guys play in for millions of dollars. So it's like you got to have that battle, that war mentality because every play, any play can be your last play. So, uh, and I really appreciate the fans because we only got our emotions on it, right? You know, we're not out there making the plays. But if you do have the opportunity to be at the game yelling and screaming and, and getting all of the voice and vocals together, then do just that. But that goes a long way. And next we have on the docket the wonderful Coach Marv. You're live. What's going on, Law? Big victory today, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Big victory today, man. Yeah, I, I was just, I was just thinking about, man. I was just thinking about Michael Parsons. Oh, yeah. You know, Michael Parsons is a young, more physical, but a little bit just as fast. Von Miller on the edge, yeah. and he's also a faster, just as physical, young Ray Lewis in the middle. What a combination to be behind the ball, on the line. The kid, the kid can be all pro in two different, even two different types of positions. Yeah. So this guy is, the, and he's just learning. Mm-hmm. He hadn't even, even touched his, because his intellect is growing. Oh. And as it, as it grows and he gets to start to think the game even better, and be able to diagnose things before they happen. I seen him diagnose a run the day where he shot the gap because he saw the run before and, and made a tackle in the, in the backfield from the from the linebacker position. Mm-hmm. It is just he just a true athlete, man. Just a a true uh, athlete, and I think his his contagious atmosphere of uh, 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 feeling. And and he's been matched up with the right coach right. because he's been matched up with a guy like Dan Quinn that has that same type of mentality mm-hmm. as he has, mm-hmm. and that has permeated through the whole defensive team. And that is that's that's some that's some great stuff, man. And I'm gonna give you some history, and I know you might already know this. Mm-hmm. The last time the Milwaukee Bucks won the the World Championship, mm-hmm. the Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. The last time the Atlanta Braves won the World Championship, the Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Oh, wow. So, I'm telling you, people, <laughs> the, the stars this are is, <laughs> this, this is, hey, the, the, the stars are aligning because this is what this, is what this young team, and all the thing we want this team to do is not to, to continue to grow and continue to not be, uh, get overconfident, but I don't think the overconfidence is going to be there because the young, these young guys don't know what they don't know how to be overconfident because they ain't never been, they never had that great success, so they're still trying to climb that mountain. Yeah. They're trying to get to that mountain, so I don't think overconfidence or whatever. I just think they just got to get some learning things, and they and it seems like they're learning fast and they're learning quick. I I I, I love the depth in this team. I, I love guys that stepping up and playing well. There's no need to talk about who didn't play well today. The day is to try to celebrate a very massive victory, uh, shut the haters up, uh, 
a lot of people thought that we, you know, I, I said when you come off a loss like this, all the, all the teams that had upset losses and um, lost to teams that they shouldn't have lost to and had very bad games, they seemed like they struggled the next game out. Mm. If they might have won, but they still struggled the next game out. Dallas is the only team that's come off a loss like they did the previous week and just came out like gangbusters the next game. Okay. That means that they – they did. They did not go wallow in what's going on. They took the ill, the way you took it like a man, but they rectified it with the next team. And now we just move on on the road. I'm glad they're on the road this week because going into a high like this, you don't want them to play that game at home because it, we want them to go into hostile territory so they can bind together again mm. and come out and do a great job. Law, you're doing a great job, man. You're doing everything, man. Keep putting the word out to the Cowboy Nation, man, and keep doing, like I always say, keep doing what you're doing, brother. Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you for calling. Are you not entertained? Good Coach Bar. Are you not entertained? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, we, we, we feeling good, man. The vibes are right. The water tastes good. Hey, the coffee is great. Hey, the people are commenting. It's good. I love seeing everybody, man, in here. Hey, I got another guy, PD, Point Dexter, man. You're live. What's up, baby? Hey, oh, all is well. A great win, man. Yeah. Forty Burger and all, you know. But uh, I hate coming behind Coach, man, because Coach takes all my points, man. <laughs> you know, these got eight interceptions, and, yes, it is contagious. It is something that Elvison Walls came on the scene, and he was getting interceptions, but the team was leading the league in interceptions, and it looks like we're going to lead the league in interceptions this year. Right. Now, yeah. I haven't seen that many points, man, in the second quarter since – Doug Williams in the Super Bowl. You remember when he exploded yeah, yeah, in the Super yeah. Bowl? <laughs> yeah, I hadn't seen a second quarter like that. It was just crazy, man. Usually we saved that for the third quarter. You know what I mean? Facts, but facts. we did in the second quarter, man. And uh, I'm going to get on out of here, but I just wanted to tell you, man, uh, I called in and I looked at the comments and somebody said I sounded like an older law. <laughs> so whenever you get on, I'm going to be like Michael Irvin and say, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, PD. Appreciate you All so right, much, man. man. Take it easy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when I get older, I'm going to sound just like that. I like it. All right. We got, is it, is, what's up, man, for the 214? You're live. What's up, La Nation? What's good with you? How you doing? Man, I'm well, man. I'm doing great. Brother, this is Perez. You Perez. Know, right? Yeah, I got your name saved right here, Perez, from the 214. Brother, we, we were just at the game, bro. Me and my boy, me and my boy, we were just at the game, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what happened last time? The, the energy was in the air, bro. We lost, and the energy was in the air. Well, this mm. time. But, but you know what we did? Today? This time we brought it. We brought the air. We brought it. We fucking did. Yeah. The energy. We bring it. You did. We brought it. Yeah. We were at the game, bro. This is this is it. This is what we do. You I know? see. I, I hear y'all having y'all putting a lot of fun over there, man. <laughs> we was we was at the game, bro. Like, hey, last game we, we fell short, bro, but. Today with them boys, bro. You should have seen how many ATL fans was there today, bro. Oh, man, I know. It was a they, sea of black and red. I don't, look, they get a lot of tickets, man. The opposing teams get a lot of tickets, man, to come in. And you should have seen how many Broncos fans was there last right. time. And right. You know what? We felt it in the air last last week, bro. We felt short, but today, today we dominated. No doubt, man. But I appreciate yeah. you for calling in, Perez. Appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for calling in. Go, Brother, Cowboys. I love you. Appreciate love you, you, man. Much you love do. to you, Perez. Let's go. Hey, Perez, man. Perez. Yo, 214, you live. The other 214, you live. Hey, Law, what's up? This is KT, man. I'm out of Dallas, brother. I love your show, man. You're doing an outstanding job. I just wanted to call in real quick, man. I was in Atlanta yesterday. I okay. put my Cowboys hat on on the plane. 
and I started I, I started getting hated on the plane a whole day. Oh, and a 17 year old man pulled me to the side up in Atlanta and told us that Atlanta was going to kick our ass today. Guess what? <laughs> he was wrong. Uh, he was and guess wrong. what? I told him. I told him wrong. I said, I said our Cowboys are special. They're different. I said we got something different. Guess what we got, Law? We got the MVP of the league right now. Rain Dakota Prescott, baby. MVP Dak. Dak. He's the MVP of the league, Law, and they don't want to give it to him, man. They ain't even He's mentioned. Look, look, look. Right now, look. Right now, any other quarterback that's doing what Dak Prescott is doing right now, they'd be mentioned comeback player of the year, man of the year. They'd be also mentioning MVP status. They'll be mentioning all of this stuff. But you don't hear the four ladder. Uh, or the three ladder network mentioning this, you know, they just say, okay, on, Dak Lowe. Prescott, you he, know, blah blah the blah. The hell we come back, the hell we come back player of the year. He's the right. MVP right. of this league, Law. Come on, man, we got him. This is right here in Dallas. Not only do we have that, we have the defensive rookie MVP of the league in Parson. With mm. them dogs on defense, we still ain't got we still ain't got our big boys back yet on our pass rush, Law. Mm. And we pounding them, man. Hey, Cowboys Nation, get behind this team. They are special. We are the third youngest team in the league, Law. Guess mm. what? La- last time we were this young was 93, and we won the Super Bowl, Law. They oh. better get hey, uh, the, the Cowboy bandwagon is over. We're we not letting nobody own it. We getting ready to go no, do this. No, B new, B new, B new, B new trying to get it on, man. He said, "Look, man, he can, he can he just get on a little bit, just drag himself I got, on." I got the law, my bad. Hey, I love the show, law. I just had to get <laughs> had to get hyped real quick. I love the show, bro. Yo, man. No. But 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 uh, KT, KT, let me yeah, know. I mean, let I mean, let me know one other thing, man. Can can you just uh, say it so loud? Where you at though? Where you at right now? I'm I'm in DeSoto. I'm in I'm down the street from you, Law. I'm in here in Dallas in DeSoto. But but can can you can you just are you on a cell phone? Where you at? Where you at? Can you go I'm outside? On I'm on the cell right now. Can you go outside right and just now. yell, How about them cowboys, man? You know. <laughs> I ain't gotta go outside. Yeah, yell it down, down, yell down, down the house then. It's your house. You in your hey, house. Let me hear. Hey, you. hey, hey, Law. We gonna beat the shit out of the Chiefs next week and with my homes and the Cowboys Nation. How about the goddamn Cowboys, baby? Yo, KT from DeSoto. I love it. That's the type of energy that I'm looking for. Hey, oh, we got you. Uh, is it, who, who this is right here? Who this is right here? Oh, you hung up right before I picked you up. All right, so Flavor, man, you live, dog. You live, dog. Flavor, you live. Who's knocking on my door? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, <laughs> what a day, what a day to be a Cowboy fan. Yo. What a day, what a day. I'm going to tell you a quick story. When I was little, my uncle bought me a, it was a Baltimore Colts back then. Mm -hmm. Bought me a Baltimore Colts helmet. You know, I got this blue mark a lot, and I drew a blue star on both sides Mm because I've been a Cowboy fan since birth. Mm -hmm. And to watch these boys do what they're doing today, man, man, man. I just can't wait. I hey, can't wait. Hey, 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 hey. The, the, the little one in the background was saying, who's that knocking at my door? It's a W. <laughs> tell, tell him it's a W knocking at the door. And his name is the yes, Dallas man. Cowboys. I love it, man. I love the energy around you in your home right now. Hey, man, I love it, man. I love it, man. Oh, I love it. Man, boy, and you, my dude, number 11, uh-huh. Micah, valuable as fuck, Carson's MVP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Diggs, Dak. You know what? I gotta get these jerseys. I gotta get these jerseys for each one of them. Oh yeah, go 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 to the pro shop active. and get it, man. Go get to the pro shop man, and go get it. Man, they is acting a fool. Uh-huh. And the people up here tell me, oh, it's just a foul. It's just a foul. It's just like the lady said. They're NFL team. Facts. I don't care who it was. I don't care if it was the uh the Detroit Lions or whoever the sorry team is right now. When you dominate like that, you put the NFL on notice. You do, like man. That. There they come. No doubt. There they come. Cowboys knocking. They're going to lock down all them birds, and they coming up in this piece. 
and I'm ready for the parade. I'm right down the street from you. I'm in Arlington. Oh, man. So, we, hey, we're going to parlay, man. I, I envision that we'll have a parade to start in Frisco all the way through Arlington and then from Arlington back to Frisco, and then we just go back and forth, back and forth. We'll shut down the highway, the byway, every way, and then we just going to do that. And if they don't authorize it, then dog it, Law Nation going to start up. We're going to go put our money together and get a float, and we're going to drive that thing back and forth to the oh, stadium. Yes, let's go, yes, man. Sir. Appreciate you, bro. I'm behind that. I'm behind yeah, that. Yeah, that's going to be all right. marvelous. All right, guys. Thanks. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one, my dude. Have you, a good one. You as well, bro. Yeah. JD, you're live from 585. What's up, Law? What's good, man? How are you? I mean, I'm great, man. I'm well. I'm well over here. How about them damn cowboys? How about them, baby? Yo, Lewis came up. Lewis is a – that defense is no joke. No doubt, no doubt. Defense travel thank, too, so we're going to see you next week. Let's go. Thank you, Broncos. Thank you for waking us up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Um, thank you for, thank, thank you for um, support, supporting you, and, and God bless you, brother. Appreciate you, J.D. Appreciate you. All right. Is this Conrad, man? Are you live now? What up, what up, Law? What's good, what's, what's, up, you, what's good, man? You live, bro? What, what a good way to start our Sunday, right? No, no, we got to start it out right, man. Hey. This is right. Hey, hey so I, I I remember talking to you after the Chargers game on week two, and okay. I was telling you we we're having a conversation about Anthony Brown, and I was saying, bro, give Anthony Brown some time with, with the Dan Quinn defense. Right. He's gonna he's gonna be all right with us. Ever since then, man, I'm telling you, he's been getting better and better and better. And it feels good to say because I, I, I didn't want him to be doing that. Wait, wait, you, know wait, 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 no, you know what I got to do with Brown? I got to continue to dog Brown. I got to continue to say, ah, Anthony, get down, Brown. I can't stand him, number 30. Because every time I say that, I look up 30 and making plays. 30 is in coverage. <laughs> 30 is not being over. The moment I praise Anthony, I be looking at play like, dog. So I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't want to jinx myself with Anthony. I so, so, so that's that's the only a bit that I got with him, you know. So I'm gonna keep saying like, oh, I ain't gonna call him trash. I'm calling him trash, but I'm gonna say Anthony, you getting burned, or Anthony, you get down brown. So <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's hey, a psyche I'm thing with me. I don't blame you for that. One. <laughs> well, let's, let's hope this train keep on rolling, and and hopefully we get back to the promised land this year. No doubt, man. Appreciate you so much for calling in, man. All right, brother. Have a good day. All right, we're going to have to do rapid phone calls, man, and we're going to do this right here. The conference here. has been locked. Okay, because we're going to have to. Uh, Willie D, Willie D, Willie D, you live. Man, all I can say is, Randy, we're back. <laughs> this Cowboy defense, like the whole team, really, and really what I want to tell you, I feel like if Jerry Jones, I don't know how, how long he's going to live, but – he can live or have long. He needs to sign old boy on um, Dan Quinn. He needs to be in the building, whether he's a coach or D or defensive coordinator. If he can stay in this building for the next ten years with Michael Parsons and all the draft things he's gonna do, man, and Dak locked up, this team got a bright future. Hey, I'm talking about I can see it right now. Two years. And I don't want nobody coming on your yo 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 line or nobody else YouTubers on talking about the Cowboys did didn't do good or whatever. I don't want nothing like that. I want all positive yeah. vibes right now. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let this is shine, Jack. No doubt, man. Appreciate you, Willie D. Appreciate you, man. Good call for you, Willie. Hey, DMV, George, you're live. That's a good call from Willie D. Yo, man. yo, yo. Hello? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You live. You live in the flex. In the flex. What's up? What's up? Yeah. I'm just happy. I'm happy we had this win. Um, looking forward. I hope we, we need to stack these. Just like I, I that's like after the Chargers when I say we need to start stacking them because I, I really like this team when they get hot. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the Broncos really taught us how to be physical. Mike McCarthy said it a few times in the press conference this week that we weren't the more physical team. Well, everybody said we weren't the more physical team, and I, I feel like going forward. For the rest of the year, we know that feeling of not being a more physical team. Right. And that's something that will take us way farther than any schematics can take us, to be honest. Right. 
No doubt. And that's all I got because I know you're playing clock game. But I, I, don't, <laughs> I didn't write down any points like I normally do. But it's all but, good, man. Yeah. Call call back when uh, we do the other episode, man. We're going to do one tomorrow, too. So call back then, man. Appreciate you, though. No problem. That's my guy right there, man. DMV, man. All right, all right, all right. We got the 843. You're live. Two oh five, you live. Yo, what's good, man? I just want to congratulate, man. The I Dallas Cowboys, man. And shout out to you, Law Nation. Been Appreciate watching it. you for a while, man. Appreciate it, man. Um, also, man, I just want to speak on the game. I feel like we played a uh, good game. Michael Parsons. Uh, literally showing up and showing out, and he really, he, we really getting our money's worth when it comes to him. You right. feel me? Fifty tackles. You feel me? Ten sacks. You know, with, with like five, five sacks, like ten, ten tackle for losses or, or mm-hmm. whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? He's really putting up a show. And I even want to say this for Trayvon Diggs. You know, last year it wasn't his best season, but this year. He's showing up in games. Yeah, they still beating them on a double move. You feel me? Uh, when, when you know when they when they run their routes or whatever. But he's still showing that even if y'all hit me with that double move, it's something to learn every every week. And y'all just keep testing me, and I'm right. keep showing y'all what I'm about. That Prescott, he's showing up. Zeke. One thing people might say Zeke is not that explosive runner like they like, like they always talking about. Right. But you got but, but what I want folks to understand and this is coming from for me is that he's a hell of a blocker Facts. when, it, when, when yeah. it comes to protecting that press cut. You see what I'm saying? So just looking at how this team is forming. Shout out to Tony Pollard because he's an explosive back. But just look at how this team is is just coming around, and then just wait till we get D Law and Randy Gregory. And, and, and all them back into the mix, it's going to be crazy. No you doubt, man. Everybody appreciate you so much, man, for calling in. you right on the money, bro. you right on the money, man. appreciate you from the 205. Oh, yeah. Good call from him, man. And thank him for watching his channel, man, and help supporting his channel. All right. Hey, Tom, you're back again. You'd be the final call for right now, man. What you got? Oh, let's bring him, man. I want you to say amen if you feel this, man. Hey, I don't care, man, about losing the Broncos. I don't care about, hey, uh, you know, Randy Gregory's on the injured list. This is all coming together at the right time. He's going to be back in three weeks. D-Law's coming back in three weeks. We got all our reinforcements coming off the bench. We are going to get strong at the right time. Can I get an amen for that? Oh, man. A- a- amen and, and hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. I am yeah. 51 years old. I was alive when we won championships of four. I have never felt this excited mm-hmm. about a Cowboys season mm-hmm. since this year, dude. I, it is going to be our time, man. I love you. I love you, Law. Hey, man, Thanks man. for everything you do. Appreciate you, man. Much love to you, man. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. Oh, my God. I love all of y'all. I love all of y'all, Cowboy Nation. I really do, man. Uh, loves the said, loves the cry. Love is when you have grief. You ask God for a sign. Baby, my love run deeper than the sea. Keep the picture. My love going to get you, Cowboy Nation. It is. And uh, as we begin to talk about this, Cowboy Nation, we just got to stay focused. We just got to keep our minds sharpened, keep our thoughts together. And everything else will complete itself. Right, Cowboy Nation? So I come here to tell you guys, for those who stuck all the way to this part right here, it's just like the game. You got to finish this thing all the way out. You got to continue to fight claw. Push things to the side, Cowboy Nation. And that is what can happen even in your mind. And at this thing right here, like Tom said, can I get an amen? That means the ending that we all agree into what was said. And we are under an agreement. And I come here to tell you, Cowboy Nation, if this team could just refocus his mind just like they did today, man, they're gonna take that word that says impossible to I'm possible. And if you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, 
to give up your time and your peace and your sleep for. If all of your desires of it makes you quite mad enough that you don't get tired of it and it makes you hold all other things tawdry and cheap for it, that life itself seems empty and useless without it and all that you scheme and dream is about it. If you're gladly go out there and sweat for it, fret for it, plan for it and lose all terror if dogged and grim and proceed and beset it with the help of Almighty Cowboy Nation, you will get it. It doesn't matter what you believe in, but it's what's in your heart. Formulated that you know for sure that if you stand tall and if your mind is together and your heart is right, man, your goals, you can accomplish them. I tell people all the time, I wanted to know who would be the dogs that's gonna be willing to fight with me. And when they hear that gunshot, shoot out and rain all over the field, huh? Are you running? Are you hiding? Are you ducking? Or are you fighting with no nation? Are you gonna help me get to 100,000 subscribers? Are you gonna help me get beyond that? Are you gonna be with me in the lowdown, in the trenches? It's war time, baby, for your mind. Let's continue to go, baby. Cowboy Nation, yeah. Let's go! <laughs> That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Fatality. We Day. out. Peace. Let's go. Let's go. Now it's time to roll. Nowadays, nothing really is ice when they want me and nobody take me. So I'm cleaning and I tell them it's ice. I got pussy on, blink and she ice. Freeze, freeze, photo, photo, please, no photos. No, no, jeez, no, 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 please, no photos. Hit the door and the dome and just the whole team here, money, some. I'm still young, but I move like a new deal to my lawyer. To is sit down in my management. I'm just warming up a way to lie. Oh, producer, saw the numbers one. Different colors in my baggy life. Chalk it up, talk of the time when you're talking up. Wanna get you a ring and you tough enough. Wanna get you no things with your pockets, dog. Run it up. I used to be quiet and out of luck. Now I move up and run the bus. The hate and the jealousy, my mama telling me, count up your blessings and run it up. Nowadays, nothing really is Jay Burson. Shout out to your mom. Martin Sadiqwa, B, no, Michael Anthony, Stan. Hey, appreciate you, B, no. I just give you a hard time. We gon', we gon', we gon', we gon' haze you just a little bit. We gon' haze you just a little bit when you try to go over here for the Cowboys Nation. My boys gonna make sure that you qualify, right? Let's go. Hey. In my own lane, single wow. row. I would never sell my only soul. Nation. Heard your whole team was for sale. Not Put us on the market for the low. Who the realest we might Come never on, know. know. All this acting, you gon' play Don't a play role. Around Give with you it. the world when they sign you up. Try you out and then they line you up. Ooh. Now you're looking hungry. Let me see some fire in the chat, baby. Let me see some fire emojis in the chat. B D Z eighty three. Huh, huh, huh. Shout out to Jackson State too, by the way. Mississippi State, Ole Miss. I see y'all said roll tide down there. Look at some of the mama cooking. Tom, appreciate you. Walk and leave. Yeah, appreciate y'all. I ran up a check, I might do it again. Might do it again. Close, you know, the Ten enemies close, down, baby. The end, crib the city. I don't it's time ass. for me to go Took grab so something hands, to eat. For the so I give y'all some more know, energy. I don't do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. Watch the trophy fall out the sky. Yeah. That means we the best, baby. Come on. Just doing me, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Crab legs, here we come, Gina. Oh, they got a crab legs spot that's off of, I believe, Hampton Road. I forgot what the name of this road is on, but it's good. It's dope. I'm going to see their location. Yeah. Come on. Turn me up. You can always send cash out. 
You always say cash to the cash app, I meant to say. Yo. If I can find that link, here it is right here. You only climb me, I put the ladders up. No fault. I done doubled up on the workload. Yeah. I think I fell in love with the bankroll. Yeah, I did. Pray up, get money, then we lay low. Then we lay low. Oh, Eddie up, Eddie up, this is party. Bankroll, Euro, Euro, peso, peso. Add it up, add it up. I'm Mama, there go that bitch. Everything. <laughs> Magic, baby. <laughs> we up out of here, baby. Tell them, this is what we did. Let's go. Five, four, three. Yeah. I wake up, Lock. sex, I'm down that chest. No drip, yeah. this. What? Tell them, run it up. Yeah. <laughs> no sleep, no rest. Come on. Might crash, my yeah. wreck. But first I stretch. Tell them, run it up. up. Hey. I wake up, flex, Yo. I'm down that chest. No drip, this. What? Tell them, run it up. Watch the world no spin. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, One of the greatest running wreck. backs of all time. But first I stretch. Nine out of ten, rub through my hands, I'm by my lonely Yeah. Turn to a savage, now my baby wants to hold me Don't hold me I now. love my fans, don't need no friends, I got my own. I got y'all Thought I could trust you, I find out you tried to zone me Don't zone I'm long. number one up on that court, I'm Nick McGrady Yeah. The first one in, the last one now, can't call me late Can't call all lazy Put in my hours, send the invoice, and they pay me Come on I need six rings like MJ and yeah, let's go, turn me up. I wake up, flex, yeah. thumb down that check. No drip, this. What? Tell him, run it up. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might break. But first, I stretch. Tell him, run it up. I wake up, flex. We gotta slow it down. This is for me, actually. When I slow it down a little bit, I revive myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Appreciate everybody. Shout out to Cowboys Experience. Be sure to check them out. Cowboysexperience.com. It's the move, it's the vibe. Let this roll out. I gotta let this song play out, baby. Don't let the street lights hit you all alone. You know it's dangerous to go alone. Don't let the street lights hit you. Can I be your player too? And we tell them. Did get from the work you did not do. Don't be upset. 
Don't be upset. You didn't do it. Don't be upset. You didn't get the results because you didn't do the work. Don't be upset. I don't want you to be upset. I don't want you to be angry. I want you to be like, E.T., I didn't get the result because I didn't do the work. Bottom line, I didn't, I didn't show up on time. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I hit the snooze button. I made an excuse. I didn't make adjustments, right? I need you to understand. Look, look, look. Don't be upset with the results you didn't get because of the work you didn't do. something inside of you that says I just have to follow that because you don't know who you're going to meet who you're going to meet who you're going to meet until next time we out and when the end comes for me let it find me conquering a new mountain not sliding down an old one